it's something called Operation Fishbowl, guys, okay? It's something that, that happened in 1962, all right? It, the original name of this operation was Dominique Chama, okay? Operation Dominique Chama. Dominique in Latin means belonging to God. Chama in Latin means fixed shell. So what they were doing was taking these high altitude nuclear missiles, blowing them up in the sky, and it was exploding. And from atmosphere to atmosphere, you were seeing light. And they were calling the missiles Thor. So they were taking these Thor missiles, shooting them up into the firmament, okay? Operation Fishbowl, think about it. Fishbowl is a big piece of glass with land on the bottom and what's on the top. A hole. So they're taking, they're trying to blow the Thor missiles into the shell belonging to God. Into the firmament, guys. This is this is insane. You guys can look it up. It's an actual operation that they were doing. Uh they were doing it and the Russians were doing it. So they were they nuclear were warheads. Nuclear warheads. Um, and I'm not talking about like radiation bombs and stuff like that. This is this is just they're just they're just missiles. Nuclear missiles, they call Thor. Think about that. Thor's hammer breaking the firmament. These guys want to just, uh, see what they try to do? They're taking another trying god. Trying to break out. They're trying to break the firmament, guys. Which, think about them trying to the mock Tower of Babel. They want to yeah. turn the Another thing I want to say, why would God care about them building the Tower of Babel? Because God's throne is up above the firmament. Hey, yo, welcome to the Godcast. Nothing is as it seems. Nothing. I mean, literally, nothing is as it seems. We took authority for truth instead of truth as our authority. The great deception is still to come. Not every human you see is human. A lot of us equate our value in life to the things that we have or the things we're able to acquire. And not the things that we're able to pass on. But just sharing this story allows those people who are just starting out to, to recognize that there's somewhere to go. Do you find solidarity within the differences or do you find division within the similarities? And it was a battle for, for my soul. It's not if you buck me the gospel. What's up now? Welcome to Godcast. The goodness over darkness podcast. Here's your host, Emmanuel Kingman. It's showtime. What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Godcast, the Goodness Over Darkness podcast. I'm your host, Emmanuel Kingman. And Mimi is not here with me again because it is two in the morning. And she was, we were in bed watching TV before uh, I hopped on here. So, you know, it's been a long day. Uh, so our special guests today were Josh and Jason Monday from Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy, which is one of my favorite podcasts to listen to. They're my brothers in Christ and their brothers, and it was a great time. They always have uh, really good shows, really well done, well researched. Uh, they put things, conspiracy theories, into a biblical perspective, and it's they do a great job with it. Uh, so you guys will have a really good time. We had a fun time talking, so you guys will really enjoy this one. Uh, I want to thank you all for being here, coming out. There is a lot of podcasts like their own that you could be listening to. And I am so appreciative that you're here now. So if you enjoy what you're listening to, please drop a like, a comment, share, subscribe, rate and review, whatever you can do to boost the show numbers i would really appreciate that it'll it'll help uh, get through to other people if, so that it becomes a suggested podcast on whatever podcasting app you're listening to it on it really really helps so i'd appreciate if you guys would do that if you want to become a patreon member you can sign up at patreon.com backslash goodness over darkness and there I do some things that you can't get anywhere else, like the Bible study. 
If you guys want to be part of the Bible study, please send me an email with the subject Bible study, and I will send you the link every Sunday we do it. And that's at 8 p.m. Eastern Sunday nights. We do a Bible study. But if you can't make it and you want to be a Patreon member, you can watch back the Bible studies. I only put it on the Patreon uh, because I don't want to put everyone's uh, business out there. You know, people don't necessarily want to be out in the public eye. So there it's on the Patreon. Three bucks a month to catch that. Five bucks a month if you want to catch that or jump in the live Q&A. And I also have a $10 a month option that doesn't have any added benefits at the moment, but it will be, there will be extras. And also, uh, I do a, a show with Nomad that it's called Examining the Evidence. And on that show, it comes out on the Patreon first. So it's only on the Patreon right now. And it'll be out, the first episode will be on another uh few weeks here i'll put it on the regular feed but it, it only goes on the patreon as well as all the videos for the human race you can only see them on the patreon so there's lots of things there that you guys can sign up for to be part of uh food forest abundance you know with today's craziness with the food shortages coming up join food forest abundance get your own food forest get a blueprint have them come out and help you be providers of your own food. You don't want to have to rely on anyone else. It's going to be getting tough out there. I don't know when, but it's going to be getting tough out there. So I suggest you all start growing your own food. Even if you're not doing food forest abundance, grow your own food. But if you are going to do food forest abundance, you can go click the link in the description and it will help you use a special uh, code Godcast that will help grow the show greatly. And I would appreciate anyone who wants to help the show. Make sure you go check out our guests' website or not their website, their podcast. Go check out their social media. They're both on Instagram. And if you're watching the video, it's scrolling across the bottom the whole time. Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. Josh Monday Music and Podcast on YouTube. And uh, also on Instagram, that's what Josh is at. So go check that out. And make sure you go to my website, emmanuelkingman.com. And there you can uh, check out all the different stuff that I have going on. So wait for the end of the episode or after the interview there will be the outro and without further ado here is josh and jason monday welcome to the godcast Cross up on my back, I'm slaying demons It don't matter what you call that Searching for the truth, facts are facts Until they fall flat It's looking like your story, man, it's all cap But it's goodness over darkness It ain't all bad I'm at my maker, but I was called back Emmanuel, show my people They're under a spell Heaven or hell is free will I made my choice and now it's well With my soul, I pray the same for you as well Welcome to the Godcast Welcome to the Godcast. Hello, everybody. On today's episode, I have on some of my favorite brothers in Christ. These two gentlemen are doing great things and recently both had babies. Today, we're going to discuss the biblical scriptures revolving around flat earth. Everyone, welcome Josh and Jason Monday back to the show. What is up, guys? Thank you so much for having us. We really appreciate you guys. Seriously, we appreciate you, man. Um, every time we do a show with Todd, it, it's always a good time, and we always end up sharing scriptures with each other, and we dig deep into the Bible. It's the stuff that we are meant to do, man. We are like born to do. I, I feel that. So uh, if anybody doesn't know me, I'm Josh Monday. Uh, we have a podcast called Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast. It's me and my brother, Jason. He's my co-host. We, take, uh, we try to take uh, conspiracy and see how it relates to the Bible. And uh, what we did, we got deep, man, into uh, conspiracies and we found flat earth and we were like, hmm. 
So we just got really deep into it. I mean, I studied flat earth about three years ago and then about two, you know, a year after that, I was just like, mm, and I kind of let it go. But when I got back into the doing these conspiracy shows and we pulled up flat earth, man, it was kind of like, uh, man, there's a lot of verses that, that match up. So it was like, I think it's the most uh, relatable conspiracy that I can do to the Bible in, 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 uh, besides if there's like Luciferian behind it, you know, or something that's kind of easy that the devil's there, but this one, there's so many verses and we would, we love to go through it and we really appreciate you, Emmanuel, for having us on Jason, go ahead and introduce yourself, brother. Like Josh said, um, <laughs> I'm Jason, uh, Monday with, uh, uh I'm his co-host and, uh, yeah, I, I didn't, even think about flat earth at all really because when you see the pictures and you see all this stuff and they you know try to uh put it on their 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 website and stuff it does it just looks like a like a like a floating piece it's just it looks weird it doesn't look right it doesn't look like uh it belongs because everything else is you know they as they say spherical and that would just be a floating piece of land out in the middle, middle of space it just doesn't look right but um yeah, then when, when I started really looking into it, I mean, I'm not as enthusiastic as Josh is about it. He he loves he loves bringing it in and, and <laughs> let's go let's in every conversation. He'll be, he'll be like, hey, yeah, 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 flat Earth. So <laughs> your thought on that? And people are like, what? I thought we were talking about like guns and stuff. Dude. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he um, he got me into it, and then I started because I, I don't care. I'll bring it up anywhere. He does it. He does it on the on the radio, but I do it you know, with our families or whoever. And he, and he starts getting all mad, like, just shut him up, shut him up. You know, it's just, it's just funny to throw it out there. But uh, yeah, um, it's it's definitely supported by scripture, and uh, and uh, like the saying goes, if you believe, if if you understand and get, you know, the first sentence of the Bible, there's no, uh, you won't have any problem with the rest of it because. If you believe that, then everything else just falls into place. Yeah. Well, I, and I want to thank you both for being here. You know, you, I love having you guys on. We're always doing shows together, and we always talk off air, too. Uh, yeah. You, I, I love uh, talking with you guys. And congratulations, you both became fathers again. So yes. congratulations. Oh, thank you. God, thank is, you. God is so great. God is so great. Blessing us with, with more multitudes to be able to spread the gospel and the good news to all of you, I'm gonna have all three of them having a podcast. You know what I mean? God is good, yeah, sure. but he's, he's, he has a sense of humor as well with it. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Well, I became a grandfather, and then you both. Congrats, uh, brother! Yeah. What? That's amazing, again. bro. Yeah, we well, could, I could, I could probably you be a look, grandfather. You don't look, you don't look like there, there's no way. Well, it's no, it's not my daughter. It's not my biological daughter's oh. uh, <laughs> child. So it's Mimi's uh, eldest daughter. She is 25, and she's married and she had her uh first child so dude mimi looks so young too man that's yeah. just, that's, she's got the she must be drinking the adrenochrome or something man because <laughs> no jeez no, no just adrenochrome <laughs> i'm just kidding. the <laughs> felon of christ if, if you look at it, if you think about it a lot of uh, our age group is they a lot of them look younger than they are and everyone yeah. says that uh, everybody yeah. tells me like dang dude you look like you've changed it all for a few little wrinkles on your you know between your forehead but that's it <laughs> yeah, Mimi doesn't look. She's forty-two, but she doesn't uh, look it. She, she definitely. I'm forty, so man. yeah. So I feel it's a blessing. I feel like I'm blessing. ninety. All right, so guys, this is what we do, man. Okay, if you're a Christian like us, okay, here's what here's the thing that we got to do. Hold on, Josh, this isn't your show. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm not the host. This, this, <laughs> is, this is his show. All right, Emmanuel. Man. Well, guide me, here is. Let's guide me, sir. Let's go off the screen and just uh, put Josh. Guide me, there. sir. No worries. <laughs> All right. Well, I did want to say, anyone watching, these aren't sunglasses that I'm wearing right now. Uh, uh, these are they're blue blockers that uh, uh, I had on a guest second time around Kelly Calabrese. She was telling me about blue blockers, which I've heard about, but I just got them today and I wore them earlier. Man, they're awesome. Uh, these things, I can, I feel like the computer's not draining me like it usually does, especially oh, screen. screen and it's, uh, it, it's it doesn't, like, it just shows it takes away the blue so that it, it doesn't, I mean, it sort of looks the same, mostly does, but it's not, uh, blind to me the way that it usually does. 
when I stare at the screen too long, you I don't know if you guys yeah, get like headaches. No, man. Like if you, I don't really get he- headaches, but yeah, if you stare at the screen too long, man, you're going to, it's going to affect you for sure. And especially if it's Make 12 o'clock at night, that's yeah. another thing, Emmanuel, you're awesome, bro. We're in, we're in the West coast. We're in Southern California. Emmanuel's in, uh, uh, in Georgia, right? Right. Yeah. Three hours away. Look at this dedication of this man right here. Nine o'clock over here, 12 o'clock at night over there. What a gangster, man. Thank you, brother. Yeah, well, Mimi was just saying, she's like, why do you always got to uh, interview them at midnight? I was like, well, they're on the West Coast and they got kids and, you know, they got stuff <laughs> to do. You, I was, so I don't mind staying up for you on a Saturday night. So, yeah, thank you guys both for wanting to do this. And I did want to say that this today, the day that this comes out, is the one year anniversary of Godcast the Goodness Over Darkness podcast? Yeah, congratulations, oh, right bro. Oh, we, oh, right our, on. our one year was in March, Jason. We actually already had a year, man. So that we, oh, we really? kind of started close to the same time. Oh, nice. And uh, we been dude, you're rocking and rolling, bro. Uh, our, we're, we're rocking and rolling. Um, Emmanuel, you've been putting out shows like every couple days, man. It's like it's amazing, yeah, it's a bro. lot. Yeah, I keep how'd, you like all these... how'd you like Monty? How was how was that one? Oh, Monty's great. Yeah, he's going to be back on in a couple weeks, too. Uh, yeah, he's got a he was never like that like like the way the way he could uh talk like that he, he was he, he, he has his way with verse now proud of him yeah. proud of that kid yeah he's mm-hmm. he's awesome yeah great story we relate so much uh, you know with the baseball uh, i could have been where he is you know that could have been me if I, I went to the pros if i had stayed with it and went to the minor leagues i mean i would have i would have been way worse than he did but you know huh. i i would have i would have been at it just oh yeah, sure. Heck yeah, we all would have. Yeah, yeah, for sure. That's why I didn't get right. blessed. That's why I didn't get cursed with that. You know, like that's that's funny. God don't want right. me to be rich. I'm right. a dog ready to be unleashed. You guys ready for this? Game, for this game <laughs> all right, yes. Well. All right, so let's get. So let's. <laughs> oh all right, so flat earth. I haven't covered flat earth on my show yet, and uh I guess one year in, I might as well cover it a little bit. You know, I don't believe that the Earth is spherical. I believe that we're inside of a sphere on a flat surface or maybe a torus, uh, like a like donut a clock, shape. But kind of like a clock. Like if you, if you lay it down, it's kind of like that. I feel like it's because the sun goes around it. That's what I feel like. Right. Though. Yeah. Something. Yeah. Yeah. I think that we all have like the same kind of picture here. So why don't you break down the Bible, the biblical references to why you think or why you are led to believe that the or the earth is flat. So as Christians, I think that we should filter science through the Bible, not filter the Bible through science. What happens is a lot of people will take what science tells them, these theories, and they say, I'm okay with that theory, even though it doesn't line up with the Bible. Um, I'm okay with this, but it doesn't line up with the Bible. But I I believe this, but but I still believe the Bible at the same time. So it's kind of interesting, man. As we know, these... uh. There's obviously me, we know, man, you've gone through so many things, secret societies, black nobility, all these uh, Illuminati, all these different people. They're trying to control us. Okay. Like crazy. So um, I feel like the devil took Genesis, put it in a blender and served it to everybody at school. And now we're pretty indoctrinated by it. So let's um, first off, I believe in the anthropic principle, the world or, you know, the, the the world or the earth is designed for man okay god designed the earth for man that's what i believe okay um <clears throat> here's what scientists say okay guys so scientists say the earth is at a 23.4 degree axis spinning in a circle at a thousand miles an hour okay it's a thousand thirty four miles an hour to be exact and rotating around the sun at sixty six thousand six hundred miles an hour interesting number okay guys well well, i want to jump in real quick because it's set uh, at the equator is 1034 but it's also it's slower as you get closer to the poles either the north or south that's what they say yes Yes. that's what they say and they say we can't phenomena we can't feel it because it's a constant speed but i just want to let you guys know okay a bullet travels 1800 miles an hour okay can you see a bullet hell no but supposedly we're moving 66,600 miles an hour and the, and the moon is uh, going around us, which we're locked on it at 2,800 miles an hour. Okay. So uh, our 2,288 miles an hour. So I go outside. Okay. First of all, I go outside. I look up at the moon and I see it right there and it's moving, you know, just slightly 
slightly, slightly, not no 2,800 miles an hour. It's not moving as fast as a bullet or two times fast as a bullet. I don't see that. Okay, guys. So that's just first of all. Okay. And then they also say that the universe is moving through space at 525,000 miles an hour. <sighs> and then the whole galaxy is moving at a million, 1.3 million miles an hour. Okay, guys, that's everything moving. But every single night, what do we see? The same stars. Okay, in the sky, we see the moon. We see the sun and the moon out at the same time. We see that the, you'll see that it's a half moon with the sun out at the same time where the earth is not blocking it. You know, a couple of things you kind of see that's just kind of interesting. And they Another also say it's that we're in a vacuum. And if you, have, yeah. if anyone's ever used a vacuum, uh, you know, it's a smaller scale than what they're claiming, but things aren't going to be rotating around a central sun if the vacuum is sucking it up. It's just going to all go and it's not going to be rotating around. That's impossible for it to move closer and further away from a centralized object if it's being sucked somewhere. Let's just say this. If you believe that crap that Josh is stating right there, you have to believe there's a God because that is freaking impossible. <laughs> good, good point. It's, you have it's to, insane. You believe, yeah, you believe okay. Stories when, when, you, when you guy. get, when you, when you get out of, uh, you know, elementary school, which is where they teach you this stuff. And then you start studying it. And when you're like, I'm 38 now, I'm like, what? 66,600 miles an hour, 666. Uh, at the end, I will connect all this together to the 666 number okay guys at the very end i'll try to put that in there before we end the podcast okay? yeah you said 23.4 tilt which means yeah. the, the 90 opposite. degrees 90 degrees minus that is going to be 66.6 i'll just do yeah. it now okay um <laughs> if you take uh it's every one mile is eight inches squared take eight divide it by 12 which is because there's 12 inches in a foot it comes out to 6.66 if you go another mile uh, if you go uh, 10 miles, that's going to be 66.6. If you go 100 miles, it's 66.6, okay? So that is, 666 is written all over this, guys, all over yeah. it. And you know they're not sitting out there with the with the, with the the gun, like when they're shooting pitches and, pfft, okay, yeah, 66,600 miles an hour. I got the earth going that fast. And, and let, me see how, let me see how fast it's spinning, pfft, 1,034. All they do is backwards math. I can do that in 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 uh, the water industry. If I have a, n a number, that's the answer. I could backwards math uh, all the way to the the actual equation. That's all they're doing with that. Okay, that's that's right. what I believe. And, and when so anyone who's listening knows when he says the the curvature of the Earth, every one mile it drops eight inches. So at a certain eight point, eight inches squared. Okay, eight inches squared. So it starts becoming right. a huge number so it's as gonna you be go lower and lower. One mile two miles, right. three miles. Now you're squaring the number. Okay. So it's, it turns into like uh, 10 miles. I don't know what it is. 33 feet of curvature, which if you there's test and everything they do. Okay. There's a person sitting on one side of the lake, 10 miles across the lake, and there's no curvature. The water does not bend. Okay. The water stays level just like this right here when it's, it, it stays level. And when you look at the earth, I have a, I could go grab it real quick. You're going to see that the earth from space all right, the pictures they show you, the, the ocean is is curving. That that just water just doesn't do that. That's not natural for it to do unless there's a, a, a bottle like this, right? So you can see the plastic, it's curving here, yeah, because something's holding it in place. Okay, because well, it forms like plastic because water forms into whatever it's in. Yeah, in so, it, so the ocean, like they also do if you take a Nikon camera and you have the boat and it's like a, a mile out, two miles out, whatever, you know, 10 miles out. They take the Nikon camera and with your with your naked eye, you do see it looks it does look like there's curvature in front of the boat. But when you zoom in, you can see the boat perfect. There's no curvature. So right, the more you, you can, zoom in, you can bring it back into your field of vision, which yes. you wouldn't be able to do if the if if you're here and the other Earth is over here, you couldn't just zoom in to no, see it. it you're not. It, it's the naked here. eye. Before, when they came up with this, you know, in the 1500s, the naked eye can't see certain things. You can't even do certain tests because they didn't know what they're, you know, they don't, they don't know how to do. Uh, they don't have a camera that could that could zoom in. Okay, but um, and uh, light light bends like that's yeah. a scientific fact that light bends. So when we're what we're seeing is the furthest distance that the light bends from our eyes and yep. the way our eyes see everything is in a sphere so it doesn't matter if you have a square camera or a circle camera your eye is like a fisheye lens eye. almost yeah you, yeah it, it's exactly like, 
The, okay, Neil Tyson DeGrasse, the 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 big science uh, uh, Freemason dude. This guy yeah. said that even if you're 125,000 feet up, you're not going to be able to see the curvature. So when they yeah. talk about, oh well, I was in a plane, I saw the curvature, or I was uh, I was uh, 70,000 miles up, I saw the curvature. According to their science, that gentleman says you have to be higher than 125,000 feet to see any curvature because the Earth is so big. Okay, and snipers so, they. Uh, snipers calculate for the curvature of is, light, and, not and that, the curvature of the earth. It's the okay, bending so of light. That's called the Coriolis effect. That is not true. That because there's there's no manual, military manual. I already looked it up. Uh, shooting manual or, or Marines sniper book that says anything about the Coriolis effect. That is something that scientists say. Now, if they have to adjust for the curvature or the spinning of the earth, is what they say. Uh, they say they have, they're they're adjusting for the for the for the spin of the earth is what the Coriolis effect is. So if that is true, then you could take a helicopter and 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 fill it up with gas, and you could go up. Uh, let's say you have 24 hours of the helicopter, you'd be able to see the, the it rotating underneath you. But that's not true. What they say is the helicopter would rotate with the earth because it's stuck in the gravity. Same thing with the bullet. Okay, that that's not the Coriolis effect is not true. So when they say, well, snipers have to adjust for the the, the spinning of the earth, that is not true. There's no book at all that says it, and they don't have to do that. That's that's just maybe I don't know. Maybe scientifically, because it goes 1,800 miles an hour, that is going faster than the spinning of the Earth. I don't know, but from all the stuff I've read, the Coriolis effect is 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 not is not true. But that's a good thing to bring up, though, bro. I'm so I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah, and one, and one last thing before uh, you continue on is cranes. So they tell us that uh, we're moving, and it's a constant. So that nothing is moving. There's no pendulum effect. But when you test, uh, so when you test it and they say that there's no pendulum effect, that nothing's moving, like cranes would be moving uh, if Good. the earth was spinning. Chandelier, Great point, bro. They, Great point. <laughs> they wouldn't just be oh, stationary. A thousand miles an hour is Mach 10. Me and Jason were talking about it, dude. If you go into a jet, some people go 1.5 miles an hour. Jay, we got to do the. That's <laughs> all. People passing out, bro. Uh, yeah. 1.5. That's only 1.5. Okay. I'm talking 10. Dude, that is like insanity, dude. We would doesn't be... matter how big you are. If you're going a thousand yeah. miles an hour, you're still going a thousand miles constantly an hour. spinning. <laughs> it doesn't matter. At 66,000 miles an hour. And then they got people saying, Well, we went to the moon. Uh, oh, really, bro? Really? It's going 2,800 miles an hour. We're spinning at a thousand miles an hour, going 66,000 miles an hour. And you want to tell me you went to the moon? Beat it, bro. I don't uh, think okay, so, you could probably land a plane either because or something like that because you would miss your mark every time. You wouldn't be on the you would never be able to like, you, land it right. If you were, were to fly west, you would be like it would be so thrown off because the it, earth is spinning, going, it would take you so long. It's spinning underneath you, right? And then you're going, or if you're going what you're right, if you're going west, going with the earth, you'll never be able to land because you're gonna be going exactly with the you're like, no, I gotta go, faster, to go than faster than a thousand miles than the an earth. hour. Once I go a thousand miles an hour, I'm finally gonna get to two hundred miles an hour and be able to make it to my destination nah bro um so that's that's all that's all scientific stuff there's also a scientific trinity guys okay the big bang theory which came from a jesuit priest okay george lamatre okay so he's the one that came up with the big bang that's where we we're 13.8 billion years ago uh there was just a pin of, of of energy exploded caused everything what that is is that's the way to explain the universe, the solar system without a God, but God in the beginning created the heavens and our heaven and the earth. Okay, guys, the other, uh, the other part of the, the Holy Trinity for scientific Trinity would be evolution. The third one would be the heliocentric globe. You have to believe all that. If you believe the earth is spinning and if it's going 66,000 miles an hour, because the whole reason why it's doing all that is because of the Big Bang, okay? You can't believe one and then can't believe the other. I'm only going to believe in one. I'm going to believe the Bible on this area. But because that's a scientific trait, all that stuff has to be true for us to be millions and millions and millions of years old, okay, guys? Um, so we have that. And what's um, keeping us spinning, though? Uh, they say it's constant because, it, like, if you, took a, if you took a baseball and you were in space and you just tossed it like that, it's just gonna keep yeah, going, yeah, but, I guess. Yeah, if 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 did you ever go to space and throw a baseball through there? And no, see, I don't, don't believe it either, bro. I think see, it's yeah, totally but I'm saying ridiculous. like what's keeping us moving when you spin a top, you spin anything, it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna, it's gonna wanna go straight. It's gonna go because I, I know I, I work with uh, centrifuges at, at my work. So when centrifuges, when it's horizontal, 
And if it broke out of that centrifuge, it would want to go up. It wants to correct itself. It doesn't want to stay at a tilt. Anything spinning like that does not want to, it wants to, it wants to, it wants to come back up, it, especially if it's going that fast. And those things only go 3000 RPM. That's pretty fast, but the earth is going a lot, like 10 times faster than that. So how are we on a tilt on the axis on that? If it's not, it's going to want to anything. Even in gravity, wow. even in uh, whatever it is, it's gonna want to. It's gonna want to correct itself. And well, how you know, we get on a tilt like that? Uh, another weird thing about being in a plane is that because it goes slower, it spins a thousand miles per hour at the equator, but it goes slower as you get to the poles. I think it goes to like seven hundred miles an hour. So yeah. that means if you're going north, that you would have to actually go like northwest in order <laughs> to to yeah, get to the, your destination. Talk to the pilots. The pilots will tell All you right. it's flat. You know what I mean? We're, we're, we're not, we're not adjusting for any of that. We're not, or if you see, here's another thing, man, before I get into the Bible part, you're going to see these blue angels, bro. They're going to be coming down and flying right off of the beach. I've seen it, bro. They probably go like 20 miles. Do you ever see them adjusting up, adjusting up, adjusting up for the curvature? No, they go right on the beach, sea level. And why is it called sea level anyways? Dang, sea level. Why? Because it's level. That's why. And mm. also, the um, what is the other one? See, it's uh, level. Yeah, it's level. See, <laughs> level, right? Anyways, uh, so we got that. So, all right, guys. So here's what I want you guys to do. I want you to imagine Moses when he's writing Genesis. He's writing everything God says about creation. Okay, the heavens, the earth. Do you really think, as God's telling him how he created the earth, that Moses is going to put his own spin on it? No, no, because God is going to say, Moses. I told you to write it this way. Correct that, Moses, right? Because if Moses starts putting his own spin on it, then it's not the word of God anymore. It's not inspired by the, by the Holy Spirit. Now, now it's inspired by Moses, which is man. We personally, I believe that the Bible is inspired by the Holy Spirit, okay? But Moses in particular talked to God. He walked, like he talked to God. He ate with God. Um, so here's what you, I want you guys to imagine. Him writing this, okay? We're going to go with day one, okay? In the beginning, God created heavens, the heavens and the earth. Uh, in, the, in the King James, it's heaven and the earth, okay? And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So day one, he created the heaven and the earth. Day two, he created the oceans and the firmament. <gasps> What is the firmament? I'm going to go through that, but I think it's interesting. The firmament is rakia. It's I mean solid. Stereoma in Greek, solid. So there's going to be a firmament and beneath is the ocean, okay? It's the waters, okay? So he separated the waters from the water. So below is the ocean and above the firmament is the waters, okay, guys? I'll go over that verse for you guys in a moment here. The third day, he created the dry land, plants, and vegetation. It wasn't until day four that he created the moon, the sun, and the stars also. So let me ask you scientists uh, and all you Christians a question. What was the earth rotating around on day three if there's no sun? Well, so they'll say, how could you consider it a day if there is no sun? Because we keep track of days by the sun moving. Well, so it, how would you yeah, consider that? But the Hebrews, they, they, they took on. their day as their day God, finished at, God, God at night says, and ended in the morning. God says in the Bible, day one, I did this. Day two, right. I did this. But ha so how, day would three, that, how would it be a day if there is no sun? Well, so it actually... So, yeah, so that is the way humans calculate a day. But right. God is telling you day one, I did this day two. I did this day three. I did this. He's not getting in detail like here's every sandstone on the ocean shore. Here's how much water I put on the earth. But he's just kind of giving you a brief little detail here um, of what he did. So, right. So the way that I would say it is that he's talking about where he is from where god is outside of space outside of our space and time outside of heaven because he created heaven and earth like the earth is essentially inside of heaven that wherever he is he created that in his one day and then in his second day and then in his third day so it's not that 
He was on earth creating from inside the earth. He is removed outside of it. So, you know, that, okay. I wanted to get so that in. the time in. part, it could be interpreted a, a lot of different ways, okay? Some people uh, interpret it as a thousand uh, years well, is, is one day in God's time. Years. Okay, yes. So, but how could the vegetation still live with no sun, right, if it was a thousand years? So the vegetation well, stuck around. It then had the, the light the of life. Day, the sun, you know, came in. So, anyways, that's the whole point for my for my whole. The Earth is not rotating part. Okay, it's it's just very interesting. Okay, so the reason why, personally, is because I feel like the Earth is immovable and it's not moving. Okay, here's some verses that talk about the Earth being fixed. First Chronicles sixteen thirty. He has fixed the Earth firm and movable. Psalms ninety three one. Thou hast fixed the Earth immovable and firm. Uh, Psalms 96, 10, he has fixed the earth firm, immovable. Psalms 104, 5, thou dost fix the earth on its foundation, so it never can be shaken. Uh, Isaiah 45, 18, who hath made the earth and fashioned it himself, fixed it fast, fixed it. You know, it's not moving, bro. And if you look at, there's like a Hebrew um, uh, way that they explain this is kind of easy. It's like a picture. You could see it where the firmament is here. The water is above. God's throne is above the firmament looking down on us. Um, then there's going to be the, the, the land, the oceans below us. Sheol. Okay. Like what it is, is God, our Jesus descended into the earth. So Sheol or hell or however you want to put it is in the earth below us uh and he talks about ascending up to heaven right that's what that's what he talks about ascending which is going up so i just thought it was interesting um here's some stuff where it's talking about the moon like i feel like the moon and the sun are what are moving okay guys and here's some proof of that biblically joshua 10 13 and the sun stood still and the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves upon their enemies. It, is it not written in the book of Jasher? So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and hath not go down about a whole day. Okay? So the sun stood still for 24 hours and the moon stood still. So according to this, the sun is moving. He did, God didn't say that he stopped the earth from moving or stopped the earth from spinning or stopped it from rotating, right? If that happened, the whole, pff, everything would probably... It would, unless God is just a miraculously just holding it in place like this, which everything hey, would fly off of it. Everything would fly off of it, dude. It'd be, it would be catastrophic. They said if it if the Earth stopped spinning, everything would be a polar shift would happen. Everything would be insane. But instead, they're fighting on the battlefield. God had the sun stand still and the moon stand still in this verse. Okay, that is very interesting to me. Um, there's another thing. It's the sun went backwards ten degrees because if you look at some of the, the way that. People have the flat earth map and everything, bro. They have the firmament and they have the sun, the moon, and the stars in the firmament. And they are the things that are moving, okay, guys? So mm -hmm. it says that the sun went backwards 10 degrees in Isaiah 38, 7, 8. It says, and this is the sign from you from the Lord. And the Lord will be do his thing which he has spoken. Behold, I will bring the shadow on the sundial which has gone down with the sun on the sundial of Ahiz. 10 degrees backwards. So the sun returned 10 degrees on the dial, which it had gone down. So I just thought it was pretty interesting, that, that yeah. verse, you know. Yeah, and I want to give a little presentation here. I have a globe that says Tartari on it, this big old globe. And I'm going to nice. show. So it opens up, right, this one? And when so when Josh is saying that the sun, the moon, and the stars are inside of it, he's saying like it's literally it's inside of here, and yeah. we're on the flat land here, mm -hmm. and it is spinning around us. Yes, yeah. The firmament is firm, not moving, but the sun, the stars, and the moon are in the firmament moving. There's some, you can look it up, guys. There's a lot of stuff. Now, those people that are making the flat earth models and all that stuff, I'm not saying that's 100% accurate either. I'm just telling you, as I go through the Bible, I'll go through stuff for you guys. Just, you got to listen to the verses, man. It's it's very interesting, okay? Um, here's another thing that I thought was interesting, okay? The moon is a light and the sun is a light, okay? The, this is, this is, you got to hear this, okay? Genesis 1, 
verses 14 through 19. And God said, let there be light in the firmament of heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament. God, this is what God is saying, okay? <laughs> this is not Josh Monday speaking. This is straight does, out does, of the Bible. But it, it also doesn't say that the light gives everything life. You know, it doesn't say it doesn't say anything about how it, it, it that's the thing supporting all life. You know, it's it's light is an uh, is a is also a, a thing that we have not even found out fully about. We we found out other stuff in this world. We found Osama bin Laden. You know, but we can't figure out light and what what it what it actually really is. You know, it's like there's a lot of things in this world that are uh explainable but this is very it's it's, it's hard to explain what what it, what this does and 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 like like it says it, it's uh it's it's a pretty crazy concept to put in put into the theory that uh back back when uh in the times of 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 jesus and and job or whatever these these people they thought the earth was flat they believed the earth was flat all of our they, ancestors did bro. yeah and, and all of them did, bro. Until and until they were believing what Galileo came around, right? philosophers and, and smart yeah. people, and 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 the smart people believe. Well, they it. say they they're smart more, people, but yeah, but no, but really, those people know? back then were more spiritual. They, they didn't, they didn't just go to work every day and and run the rat race all day long. They sat around and and read books and and actually talked to each other and actually and they did thought things. about things. Yes, they thought about things, and and what what do you think they believe? And they believed, you know, the words out of the Bible. But what do people do today? They they do the same thing, but with man's theory of it. They they take right. scientists' word for it. They don't know these people. They don't know. They don't know what is that guy Neil deGrasse. They don't they don't know him personally, but they listen to what he says because what he learned from a he learned from a school that taught him this taught him this uh, out of stuff. a book. Out of a, it's 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 just the Rockefeller. Right, and, and it's so funny. Regurgitation. It's so <laughs> funny that when people uh, those this the bible to say oh you know it's supposed to be the word of god but it's a man that wrote it it's like well so is every other book and every other thing that you use and the internet that's all yeah. written by man and it's not god inspired and it's all bible. agenda driven you know if you look up flat earth on youtube that you're gonna get all these flat earth debunking videos it's so hard to find stuff now why do they need to do that why don't they just if they think it's so stupid and and, and not even close to being true they would just leave all those videos up but no well, congress told youtube you need to fix that problem i'm not lying dude congress told what are you going to do about the flat earth problem that they keep bringing up on every time i look up youtube flat earth pops up are you guys going to fix that i'm not lying bro congress why, they told why, why the you youtube lady it? why would the lie be so right and they so put so long and so earth earth society that is nonsense they oh, yeah, yeah, flat earth society, society. Please they don't look it's at a that flat disc that, yeah. that's going through space. Yeah, that's yeah. Most that's weird. insane thing ever. That right there is that right there is um uh, like Asgard on the on the comic in, in Thor. Like just, the government like, <laughs> putting that out there so that people look at that when they Google it and go, that's ah, that's silly. Just, this is stupid. This is yeah. silly. I'll never. Th okay, but dude, the but Bible it helps bro, them disprove God. It helps them throw yes. those stories out there and disprove God and disprove and, and throw out evolution. And make sure that you're not even th believing that, that that you have a creator, and that and when you make when you make something revolve around something else, you make that thing that revolves around that object lesser, you have to be lesser. So we don't think of ourselves as 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 special. We just think of ourselves as a random thing that happened that came out of nowhere. We came from monkeys. Amoeba. Yeah, yeah. We, we grew up yeah. in amoebas. We're, that, we're just a, a slop of some of, snot, <laughs> some some weird whale snot that just came on the ground. We, we we formed and started like just molding ourselves and walking, and then we we made lungs and started breathing, and and we you know it's like no, that's not. DNA. What happened. I don't know how we made this. How can you believe if you don't believe the Bible? At least a shred of information in there. How the heck do you believe? That we came from, from some jizz on the ground. That that this, I mean, that that's just weird. That just, it just makes me feel. I want to. I just want to like like, oh, millions and millions and millions and millions of, and billions and billions of years old. Like when I was a kid, we were only thirty thousand years old. And, and, and I get older. We're we're ten. We're a billion years old. Yeah. And I'm like, what, dude? Like, I don't even read. My kids like, yeah. We're, I'm like, no. I don't think you understand. The Bible states. 
we are we're only about six i feel like we're only about six thousand years old you know just like the bible says bro like in, in second peter the day in the life of the lord is like a thousand it says do not be ignorant of this fact be ignorant which means that and, and th when it's done like that don't be don't be stupid do not be stupid and 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 believe this stuff but this is real why do you th you don't think that people lived 800 years back then it's, it stays in the bible or that long you don't think these people were pretty smart you don't think they were smart you don't think they had they things that were themselves yeah you don't think that they were smart 100 years you could you just piss off you know do whatever you want for 100 years 300 years you could do nothing for 300 years and then your foreign year you go learn another language you, <laughs> you learn, piano, you you can learn every rock. language ever yes yes so, you would know right. everything you would right be, it would be like so, it, that's crazy to me that people yeah and, and another another reason why they uh keep us thinking that the earth is spherical is the i think it's even bigger than the the shape of the earth is that then space is fake you know, like we were just saying, flatter society, they make it like, oh, duh, uh, that's so fake. But that's because they're still thinking space is real, that you can get to space. Yeah. But but we can't we can't get to space. And that NASA is where they throw all the money at so they can do all the black projects. Five million dollars a day. That's I like, like forty nine million. They, that's a place where they watch their money. They just they just, yeah, yeah exactly. Like, that's all the black projects. It all goes there, and that all goes away if space isn't real. Oh yeah, and that becomes a massive problem. And then it's God's problem, handiwork. But, that's what he okay. that's what he proves. That, that that's knew, what's been you think funding God the knew cabal. This was happen? You don't think God knew that that people would start bending this crap, and and, and he's like, no, this is a true faith test. I'm telling handiwork. you guys. I'm telling you guys. It's not. It's it. Yeah. It it sucks. They're trying to put God so far away. There's a whole bunch of stuff to it. But this is a true test of your faith. As I'm reading these words out of the Bible, are you going to believe the word of God or are you going to believe Neil Tyson Degrassi or are you going to believe these 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 scientists that are atheists well, that hey, don't even, even believe in God? What are you going to believe? Bill Nye, the science guy, said multiple times that we're in an enclosed uh, yeah, system, system that we can't leave the, the Earth's atmosphere. Yes, yes, yes. He did say that times. He's a times. paid actor, that failed comedian. And, and he, <laughs> yeah. we believe him. He is. He believes well, I him. Don't, yeah, yeah, I don't necessarily believe him, but, you know, even yeah, yeah, yeah. he, I know. even one of their he top hates guys is Earth. saying it. All right, so let's get this going. Okay, so guys, I told you guys that the moon is a light and the sun is a light. Uh, so Ezekiel 32, 7, it also says the moon shall not give her light. Okay, which is interesting that it says her light like why you have to say her light and when they talk about the sun sometimes it says his light i just thought that was interesting um let's get in to well have you uh seen uh crow triple seven the lunar wave i've i've yes i have i have yes that's I super that's interesting very interesting guys and and it's you like know what, man? The moon, the moon is is, is, is interesting. I never, I never seen it. Like, okay, oh, so just, the okay. lunar wave is, uh, if you've ever seen a recording, an old recording on like VCR, you know, if you would have it on pause for a certain amount of time, then it would just have like a line go up. Do you remember yeah. like those old days where the screen there would just be a line that just went up, and yeah. like the whole thing would be like reset. It looks and like a hologram, would shift bro. Shift to the left just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, oh, it's man. it's weird. You'll have to look it up. It. So it's yeah, Crow Triple Seven. It's yeah. C R R O W seven seven seven. He's a, uh, he's got he, some good stuff. That guy. Yeah, he's, he's on. If it. he's not on YouTube, still, you get him on BitChute at least. Yeah, uh, yeah. he uh, he's filmed the moon, and it just out of nowhere, it looks like there's a literal wave that just goes up the entire thing, like it's going straight across, it's, it's, it's and like, it just moves. It's like uh, it's a recording it's, of. It's pretty the moon. interesting. It's pretty interesting. Wow. No, Look yeah. it up, dude. Um, okay, so next let's discuss the firmament, okay, guys? And keep in mind, the moon, the sun, and the stars are in the firmament. I say that a lot because you guys got to understand. There's a guy named Ken Hoven. He's a, he's a creationist. He's got he's done a lot of good things, man. Like, like he, he's went up against evolution like head on. But when it comes to reading the Bible, he takes the firmament and he makes it like a solid ice saying it surrounded the earth. He said that's what the firmament was. But he did. He keep in mind, 
he de- he must not have read the part that says that the moon, the sun, and the stars are in the firmament. Because if that ice was around the earth, it would have to be around the galaxy. Because God says he put the moon, the sun, and the stars in the firmament. So if you listen, if you look at Ken Hovind, he's a great uh, Bible theologian. Don't get me wrong, okay? I'm not saying I'm not trying to say this guy is wrong. I'm just telling you that when he talks about the creation, uh, his creation theory of the globe, and that that the ice is read what would happen if the ice melted that fast guys and caused the flood it would it would demolish the earth okay guys just read up on it so um all right so it says genesis 1 6 through 8 and god said let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters and let it divide the waters from the waters and god made the firmament and divided the waters from which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament and it was so and god called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Okay, guys? So the firmament is solid dome. And we talked about it already, that there's water above the firmament, which God just said right there. And above the firmament is God's throne. Okay, guys? Right, and it's an energy field. It's uh, like, it's a density, essentially. Like, if you look into the, it's very interesting when you start to float objects. So take a cup of water and you have four different uh, types of uh fluids in there for different densities you have like oil yeah. vinegar water and you let it settle out soda even yeah and you throw different objects in there they will float at different levels yeah so different density like, yeah yeah because of the density so with oxygen has uh water in it you know uh, like there is it's a tiny amount but as you go up to the next density there's more water in it. And what's separated is just an energy field. Like when I go, when I go to sleep, sometimes I've been woken up as I'm uh, like just falling asleep and I've seen the firmament and oh. I have gone through it. And it looks like Epcot. You ever seen Epcot Disney's Epcot with yeah. uh, that yeah, golf ball? Yeah. yeah. Well, that golf ball, that is what it, that's the actual shape. Those little, uh hexagonal like shapes like a golf like a golf ball basically like a golf ball right yeah the dimples yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah the Bro. dimples yeah the the different hexagons that is what is uh that's what the every grid pattern is all the blocks of the firmament that's what the, exactly what they look wow. like wow that's interesting okay so think about this guy i've seen uh, guys here's here's something you got to think about <laughs> So the firmament is there, there's waters above it, and then above that is God's throne. So when we die, we become spirit. So we can descend or ascend right. to heaven because we're spirit now. We could go through the firmament now, okay, guys? Why do you think our spirit is not solid like this human body here? Because we right. need to travel through the firmament to be able to go to like heaven. like astral traveling, essentially. Yes, and David, okay, so they were talking about the ice thing around. Well, after the flood, flood already happened, David is right here in Psalms 148 talking about the heaven, the waters above the heavens. He says, uh, praise ye him, the sun and the moon. Praise him, ye the stars of light. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye heavens that above the heavens, are the water that are be above the heavens. So the water above the firmament. David is speaking to it right here, guys. And we got Ezekiel 10.1 also. Then I looked and behold in the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them, it was a, a, a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So Ezekiel's looking up into the firmament, right? And above the cherubims, which is, which is, is going to be the throne. Ezekiel speaking to it right here. In the firmament that was above the head of the cherubims, there appeared over them as a sapphire stone as the appearance of the likeness of a throne. So God's throne is above the firmament, guys. And then in Revelation 4, 6, it talks about what the firmament is made out of, okay? Um, uh, in, in Job, it talks about molten glass, okay? In Revelation, it talks about it says Revelation 4, 6, and before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. So 
He's talking about the glass. It's 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 a sea of glass, like crystal, is what the firmament's looking like when you're looking at it from above, okay, mm -hmm. down. And it's saying there's a throne below. So um, uh, it's kind of interesting. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of this, but uh, it's something called Operation Fishbowl, guys. Okay, it's something that that happened in 1962. All right, it, the original name of this operation was Dominique chama okay operation dominique chama dominique in latin means belonging to god chama in latin means fixed shell so what they were doing was taking these high altitude nuclear missiles blowing them up in the sky and it was exploding and from atmosphere to atmosphere you were seeing light and they were calling the missiles thor so they were taking these thor missiles shooting them up into the firmament okay operation fishbowl think about it fishbowl is a big piece of glass with land on the bottom and what's on the top a hole so they're taking they're trying to blow the thor missiles into the shell belonging to god into the firmament guys this is this is insane you guys can look it up it's an actual operation that they were doing uh, they were doing it, and the Russians were doing it. So they were they nuclear were, warheads. Nuclear warheads, um, and I'm not talking about like radiation bombs and stuff like that. This is this is just they're just they're just missiles, nuclear missiles. They call Thor. Think about that. Thor's hammer breaking the firmament. These guys want to just uh, see what they try to do. They take in another trying god. Trying to break out. They're trying to break the firmament, guys. Which is it, it, think about them trying to the mock Tower God's of Babel. Up. They want to yeah. they want to tear Why the Babel. Another thing I want to say, why would God care about them building the Tower of Babel? Because God's throne is up above the firmament. So when they were building that, if you read the book of Joshua, they're talking about it being built. Um, it's like a mile by a mile, dude. This thing is huge. They were yeah. spending a year on it, and they were making steps around it. And they were so mad if somebody drops one brick. Now, if a person falls off and dies, they didn't give a crap. They cared about the bricks. And the, the, the stuff that, because they have to go all the, the way up there. Yeah. Exactly, bro. So it's very interesting. Why would God care if they're building a tower? Because if, if if it was the way that they say it is, it's just going to go to space. And God's just going to say, you can't breathe up there. Good luck. But they I, wanted to go up into the throne. And they wanted, right. it was Nimrod saying, let's go get God. We want to take God out of his, off of his throne. I think yeah. it's uh, where the Grand Canyon is now. I think that's where they were building it. That's just my opinion. Yeah, you know, I that's look at the earth, and that's obviously it's interesting, man. Yeah, it could it could be? I don't even know, but it's it's an interesting thought, man. It's there's like a, there's an old there's an old treasure story that says that some dude was was uh, at the bottom of that place, and I think there's like a small little river or like a like a like a. And he was going through, and he found like a he saw something open. He went inside there, and, and it was a cave, and he found a whole yeah. bunch of treasure from different countries. Yeah, and and then he went back to go get it, and he couldn't find it again. There's that's, pyramids that's, all over. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Yeah. Where, 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 I uh, think that, that that's old Egypt. You know, we've talked about before how Israel and California are the only two places with Joshua trees. Yeah. You know, I think that in some way, I don't know how exactly, but in some way, America well, is uh, what we call the Middle East. I think that it was originally in America that we know now is America, that, yeah. uh, that Arizona and the Grand Canyon was Egypt. And that California was Israel, and uh, that Rome was Georgia, and mm. that you know these different places existed. Put the Georgia guys. That's that's crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. There, guys, this is just Rome, all Georgia. Stuff that, do you know about stuff, man? Do you know about the Cherokee Indians from Rome, Georgia, that owned slaves, and uh, they said that they were the original Rome, and that Rome, Italy, copied them. <sighs> That's no, awesome. no, so, but I, 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 I know that their, their, their beginning of their life story is about <clears throat> on what the Bible's life, the, the beginning of the Bible in the. Uh, oh, you're talking about their, their creation story compared yeah, it's, to it's, ours. It's, it's, it's and very Yoda, similar. The Yoda, Yoda of Huawei and and the, the way they say it is. It's, yeah, they, they speak the of, same way as yeah. uh, the Hebrew language. Yeah, yeah and, and Washington D.C. Used to be called Rome, Maryland before it got changed to Washington D.C. And look how we well, run. Look how we maybe run. That's it, why dude. we try to shut them up so much. We are dude. the new Rome, bro. I'm telling you, bro. We have the Senate. That's the same New as York the City, Babylon. Capitol Hill. 
It's the same thing as, as, as they had in Rome, bro. That's just the Senate. That's the same thing they used in Rome. So yeah, it's interesting stuff, guys. Look into that, you know, yeah. but, uh, what do you, okay. So here's another thing, guys. Okay. This is the interesting thing about, uh, we were talking about NASA. We we're kind of going over that. The, uh, director of NASA was Warner Von Braun. Okay. And they said that he got saved, bro. I don't know, man. They said he, got, when he was like, I never heard that. They said that um, I, I looked it up. I never put this on any of these, these these podcasts yet, but I was just researching what is this religion? What is he? Now, I'm not saying he was 100% safe, but he started going to church before he passed away. So mm-hmm. he could have uh, had a little, you know, maybe he was holding back this lie, Come but he Jesus wanted to moment. leave us. He wanted to leave us a clue. Right. Where did he leave that clue? Don't on his tombstone, tombstone, baby. What does he got? Psalms 19.1. The heavens declare the glory of God and the firmament show with his handiwork okay guys so Look did, it up. did he run into the firmament with his operations and he's like oh well the bible is real well, think about this jerk bro the saturn five right it's the saturn these are all gods apollo uh they want to take apollo and uh and, and inseminate the moon so take the apollo uh the man take it to her the moon right because they say it's her light and he wanted right. to try to inseminate the it's it's all uh, what is what is the Germans? Okay, what are they? The, the the Brotherhood of Saturnalia. That's their secret society back then. Okay, the Black Sun. Okay, but listen, the Brotherhood of Saturnalia. That is like a deep, deep secret society that was involved in some crazy stuff. Where did Warner Warner von Braun come from? Operation Paperclip. Nazi scientists. Okay, guys. So he wants to take the Saturn Four, which is a god. Okay, Greek god. All this stuff is all. Uh, there's there's a, a Apollo. There's all this different stuff that's that's uh, Jake. Krampus ahead, comes to well, well, uh, Todd, Todd mentioned the uh, Epcot Center, right? So Walt Disney was a homeboy order, and that yeah. that Epcot. So like you, I was thinking about that. I'm like, wow. And and if you think about it, wow. The way, Good the job, way Jason. Walt and all them hung Good out connection. together. They put a cloak over. They put a they put their own veil over people's eyes, man. They they got people busy worrying about cartoons and 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 you know fairy tales magic wizardry uh witchcraft all that stuff is in there mm-hmm. but no one's they don't ever put anything godly in there they don't ever put anything so is that epcot center what's on the epcot center is there like forestry and stuff like that on the inside of that and all that i don't that, even know i wonder bro i wonder if it's like that if that's Probably a place basically. where they have sacrificed children good <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just okay. Uh, good connection because Stanley sorry. Kubrick, Warner von Braun, and uh Walt Disney were all close buddies and pals. They were making uh films a- about the moon landing and stuff. So you guys can all look that up. That's a whole nother episode, okay? We'll do that episode too, bro, at some point, dude. But think uh, about do that. You, do you know what uh Epcot stands for? No. It stands for, for Experimental Prototype Community of Tomorrow. Wow. So, dude. It, it's, it's like a like, World's Fair. It's like show a Show with Truman, baby. Fair. <laughs> it's just a show with Truman. That's weird. Um, so, uh, okay. So, here's some stuff that's interesting. So, Genesis 1-8, uh, and God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Second Peter 3, verse 5 and 6, it says, For this willfully forgot. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old and the earth standing out of the water and in the water by which the world that existed perished being flooded with water. Okay, guys, I thought that was super interesting. Okay. Um, Also, when the earth flooded, you got to think about this. Okay. The earth flooded. It's 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 going to be flat land. If you think about it, the firmament, God says that he opened up the windows of heaven. So he opened up the firmament. The waters came in to the earth and it came from the deep too he opened up the fountains of the deep so the waters came filled up it's a flat land dude water filling up is okay if there's a firmament the waters are coming from antarctica boom everything's coming up because if you look at the un map that's the way we we look at the that's what people say the flat earth map is i don't know what the heck the flat earth map looks well, like i don't five, know because five agencies uh, uh global agencies have that as uh, yeah their the logo. un map you look at it from the top. It's got Antarctica the on the it, think, outside. Well. The center would be the North Pole. So if you think about that, and there's a globe. Uh, I'm not a globe. I'm sorry. There's a, a firmament above it, and, and he opened up 
the the it literally opened up the firmament and the waters came in and it flooded. There was also rain too. Okay, guys, but if how it's going to be very hard to to put to flood a, a ball spinning at a thousand miles an hour. Have you ever took a tennis ball and spun it around and threw it with water on it? The water is going to spray all over the place. It's going to be hard to flood the globe harder well, than you, to you flood think he's filling the something up. Thing. He's filling up something that has. When he, I feel like it was the Milky Way because if you look at the Milky Way at night, it looks like a like a tear to the whole sky. It looks like it does look like that. I feel like, but uh, yeah. If he's gonna, if you're gonna open up, because rain is not gonna not gonna flood the entire Earth. And this, we're not talking just in Egypt or in just in Israel flooded the entire Earth flooded. And it rained for forty days straight to begin. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, and it's and interesting, the Book of Enoch says that there's three portals in the north, three in the south, yep. three in the east, and three in the west. That. There you and go. You know, they're portals to the other side. So if he opened those portals or windows up, there you go. The water flooded in. And, and, and Enoch okay. even, even says about the uh, about uh, the foundations of the earth. And and uh, and this is this this guy used to hang out with God. He kicked it with him all. Like he walked with him all. Like he was his buddy. He, he went straight to heaven, he was, bro. He nope. was the first one right. Didn't pass. Didn't pass. Raptured. Go. He was straight yeah. raptured, bro. Him, you know, him, and people uh, in the Bible that were raptured, and he did not collect two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. just went straight. Bam, walk with God so much, dude, which is amazing. Yeah. And that's um, what foundations you can't like foundations. You have to put on a flat. You have to lay. It has to be flat to put a foundation on. Right. Yeah. Anything, anything you you build up it has to have a foundation. It's got to be on flat. It can't be on. It can't be on level because it'll it'll it won't it won't work that it won't work that but that good. Yeah. There's foundations. In the Bible, I could, I'll could. i go over that. Um, so they got three heavens, okay, guys, where the birds fly, right? Where the sun and the moon and the stars also are. And then above the firmament where God's throne is, 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 is where God's throne is, and Jesus sits at his right hand. Paul talks about going to the third heaven. He says that, I knew a man in Christ. This is 2 Corinthians 12, 2 and 4. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell. Whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth. Such one caught up, okay, to the third heaven. And I knew such a man, or or uh, whether in the body or out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth how he was caught up into paradise and heard unspeakable words, which was not lawful for man to utter. So he's caught up into paradise. Why? Because heaven is up above the firmament, okay? Also, when... Uh, if you guys could, if you ever think that God's in another dimension and far, 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 far away and all this crazy, you know, 20,000 trillion uh, light years away or whatever, then you show me the verse that says that God's in another dimension and I will believe you. But it doesn't say that. OK, um, here we go. When Jesus was baptized okay, by John the Baptist, there was a voice from heaven that came from up in heaven. OK, G Matthew 3, 16 and 17. And Jesus when he was baptized, went up straight away out of the water, and lo, the heavens were open unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove. Think about this, dude. The Spirit of God, because it can go through the firmament, which is the Holy Spirit descending like a dove, right? So um, it's descending like a dove and lightning, lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven, up in the firmament from heaven, saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. So where is God? Above the firmament, sending his Holy Spirit down like a dove, which he can go through the firmament, no problem. All this stuff makes sense to me. I don't know if it makes sense to everybody else, but it makes sense to me, okay? Um, just just interesting stuff. Yeah, man. no, it all makes sense to me, too. I mean, it makes a lot more sense and makes it, uh, I mean, it's just, when you think about it, the spherical earth, you know, the way you opened up here, the sphere spherical earth it's we just think that that's what it is because nasa is showing us and then science class in school tells us that's what it is but nobody knows the specifics when you yeah. get into flat earthers they know the specifics and they're like are you defending this and the person's like well i, I don't know that that's what it is he's like yeah but that's what nasa tells you so i'm telling you this is what it is uh yeah. that you're you believe do you even know the information that you say you believe and people don't they just don't they just take it as truth 
because NASA's saying it, because their school is saying it, because everyone else I know says it. So why would I even think of questioning it? it you know, it it's well, people uh, back then when they heard, when they heard it, they 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 believed it because it was taught to them. So they uh, they didn't want to go study it and try to figure it out. It is it was easy. It's, they took the easy way out and just believed it. They if what i'm not i'm not saying i'm 100 right about this i'm not saying i know i know what i'm talking about i just I, like i always say look for, look up look up yourselves come up come up with your own conclusions but if they got it wrong you don't think that they get it wrong now because in 10 in like in a, about 20 years they'll come up with a new theory you'll be like we were wrong about all that science constantly changes but the book yes, the, but the and- word of god doesn't does change, baby. It no. stays the same. So it's science is grooving, constantly, <laughs> constantly changing, moving and grooving with the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, okay, here we go, guys. Okay, this, I thought this was kind of interesting. It's Ezekiel 8 3. He stretched out the form of a hand and he took me by a lock of my hair, and the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven. Okay, Ezekiel saying that earth. And heaven are connected because it says right here, took me by the lock of my hair and the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions to God, to of, of God, to Jerusalem, to the door of the North gate and inner court. Okay, guys. So it's, it's just interesting. Here's another thing in revelation. God talks about creating a new heaven and a new earth. Why does he need to create a new heaven if he's creating a new earth? Because the earth and the firmament and above that is heaven because it's connected. That's why it's it's connected. That's why he has to create a new heaven and a new earth. If it was in dimensions, uh, light years, how, however you want to put it away or in another dimension and, and earth is separate from this, you can create a new earth, no problem. And, and you can keep heaven the same. Why do I need to create a new heaven and a new earth? Well, that's because just like I Ezekiel's do. talking about. Yeah, the, the gap theory kind of like when we talked about that last time, it's 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 when it says the it was without form and void, that means it, 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 it there was something there before that. And it, it, it's weird how I, I forgot how it was explained, but um, next time I'll I know, try, we, to, try we, to figure it out. But go to our there was our, something our there we did, already, <laughs> okay? So he had to what it like, what does it say, replenish it, replenish it, replenish yeah. what was already there, all that. So yeah, yes. told Adam and Eve to replenish the earth, which means yes. that there was maybe something before. But yeah, all that stuff, you guys can study it. If you know, we, we had that show already. It's it's all interesting stuff for sure. It's interesting. Um, so we have okay, guys. Here God doesn't is, lie. Is, yeah, That's God true. doesn't lie. He's not okay. lying. He's not. He's not in the. He's not here, in the, the job of lying to you. He's not trying to. Here lie. is the Globers. They will say, oh, you know what? There's here it is, bro. It's the circle of the earth. So it's Isaiah 40, uh, 21, 22. Okay. First of all, in Hebrew, there's no word for sphere, okay, or globe. Okay. I'm just letting you guys know. There's that. a word for ball, but there's no word for yeah, that, there's yeah. a word for ball, but no word for globe or any of that. Okay, guys, or sphere. So it says right here, Isaiah 40, 21, 22. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? There's the foundations part again. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth and its inhabitants are like grasshopper who stretches out the heavens like a curtain and them out like a tent to dwell in. Okay. Think about this. Okay. God is above the firmament looking down on us. And it's a circle of the earth. If you look at the flat earth map, it's a circle like a quarter, right? And then he's looking down on us like we're grasshoppers. Like a snow globe. Also, also yeah, there you go. Yeah, I got also, one of, right yeah, up there. What, Pop that off. Let's, 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 let's see that thing, dude. Because okay. Also, guys, think about this. Have you ever put a tent on a ball? No. You put a tent on the flat ground, man. It says it right here, and he look spreads. At that. Like, look at that, though, Josh. Look, look, look. Why would Eric they even Snow. make that like that? Yeah. That's Where'd they come man. up with the idea for that? Like, Take that, times it by 24,000, and you, you're going to have uh, what we believe. It that, speaks what, of what corners. I believe the is, Bible. In, in Enoch, it speaks of speaks corners, about. four corners. It speaks of, it speaks of uh, uh, um, pillars. The pillars. Uh, yeah, that's, that's crazy, dude. That's circle. weird. Look at that. Yeah. That's yeah. a circle. And yep. look at the look at the stars moving too. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fall into the earth, and then right on top, I, you guys 
probably can't say it because it's going to move, but there's a bubble, an air bubble that <laughs> sits a, on yeah. top. That would be like God looking down. No, he's not going to be above that. I'm sorry. He's above the firmament. There's going to be water on yeah. the outside of that and God above the firmament. I don't know if I have to say it a million times. <laughs> okay, so this is what it says. Isaiah clearly knows the difference between a Nice ball. pajamas, Todd. Thank I you. Love it. Is that, uh, is that uh, uh, the Christmas story? Yes. <laughs> yeah, they're, 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 they're the warmest pajamas ever. They have no uh, pants pockets, too, so that oh, no. my cell phone radiation can't be messing with my genitalia. <laughs> nice, nice. So. All right, so, okay, Isaiah clearly knows the difference between a ball and a circle because in Isaiah 22, 18, he, sh- he says he will surely violently turn and toss thee like a ball into a large country. Okay, guys? It so is who there. said the circle? Isaiah. Isaiah, bro. He and said Isaiah, both? He says, listen, yeah, he, he says, in, yeah. he says okay. circle of the earth. He could have right. said he sits over the ball of the earth and watches us like grasshoppers. No, he says the circle of the earth and watches its inhabitants like grasshoppers. And then uh, in Isaiah 22, 18, I'm just telling you guys, he knows the difference between a ball and a circle. He says he will, he mm-hmm. will turn, toss thee like a ball into a large country. Okay. So God is above us watching us like grasshoppers. If you guys knew that, or most people knew that, what do you do when your boss is watching you at work? You're going to be not, you're not going to be acting up. You're going to be straightened out. You're going to be doing your stuff. Most people don't have integrity. Yeah. So God, if he's watching us (laughs) like grasshoppers, they're going to, he's going to basically, most people would probably, I think would sin less if they knew they're not going to be sinless because it's just, it's just so hard, man, because your mind just does stuff that you can't control sometimes. But you're going to sin less because God is watching you like grasshoppers from above the firma mint. And he's also omnipresent anyway, so that, that doesn't matter. But, you know, he's omnipresent. He's going to be able to see you do your stuff anyway. So hopefully you guys know that. But um, So we got that. Um, uh, you can look into Job, too, guys. It talks dude, about- Job is the oldest book in the Bible, dude. So yes. you have to understand that, too. It's like I thought that- Genesis was. No, no, Job, Job is the oldest book in the Genesis was written by Moses, but Job came before Moses. So okay. you know, Genesis is speaking of further back because it's talking about you know the creation and everything. But God was speaking to Moses. So when he yeah, wrote the Bible's Genesis, not in chronological order, right? Yes, yes. Job is is interesting, bro. So interesting. Uh, that's why when I was talking about in the earth, when was you know, Job from? What time? Like 430 AD, I think it was. Look I it up think. to make sure because I don't want to be saying stuff. Or make, or like make sure yeah. it's I'll go look, make right sure now. Hold that, on. look because I don't, I don't want to, if we're talking about the Bible. I don't want okay. To so be that was stuff. that was written in 430 AD or around Does there. Does it say that? Did you uh, look it that's up? what Jason just said. He, I know, but he's, but he's gonna he's grab it something. right now for <laughs> our <laughs> audio. But yeah, so Genesis was written in like uh 200 uh BC, right? Like something mm. like that. It was. A uh, few hundred Job written. Let's see. Okay, so it's gonna it says scholars generally agree that it was written between the seventh and fourth centuries BCE, with the sixth century BC as the most likely period of various reasons. Okay, so, so the five hundreds, five hundred yeah, BC. Seventh or fourth, yeah, yeah, BC, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what it says. So you know, it's 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 interesting. I mean, I I mean Gen- yeah, because Genesis, they say, was written in, in like 200 BC, like two between two and 300 BC. Yeah, it says in my in this one I got, I got that look like uh, it says dates uncertain, but it's it is older. It is before. Yeah, that, that's yeah. most most scholars Josh will say got that it like 500 BC. So yeah, yeah about yeah. 300 years older. Okay, so, well, well I, I, written I, I, down, but uh, yeah. Moses did come before Job, but it was just written earlier. Yeah, yes. but when you when you read Job, when uh, I like I like the the chapter thirty eight when he uh, all of his friends are sitting around talking about like who about like basically sl- slandering God's creation and God's like, hey man, you know who who's saying that? You know who who's who's the one saying that? Like who is? Why don't you guys gird up your loins and stand up and be a man and tell me where were you when I created the the foundation right. of the earth? Where were you when I did all this stuff? You don't know nothing, so don't don't speak on it. Like that's what I feel like too. I can't prove flat Earth, but I would I would rather use the Bible to try to prove my theory right than go by go by uh, go by man's the, theory. Yeah, man's theory yeah. of what it is, and because it, it's always wrong, it's usually wrong. Well, and it's super interesting that Josh has brought and Jason, both of you guys have brought so much stuff 
nothing says anything about it being spherical or a ball nothing. or something. You ain't going to find it. It doesn't you say anything not. about it. And there's endless uh, verse after verse that you're talking about, about the heavens and about the flat earth being circle. I mean, there, there's just so much to it that, uh, you know, some Christians, they really get offended that when you get into flat earth, they're like, oh, no, that's not biblically accurate. <laughs> but people who are studied like yourselves, you're like, no, it is biblically accurate. Then you, you don't know the Bible that you're reading. You and can, then they get what? offended. Because Listen they're like, wait, some people, wait you're man. you're saying I'm not saved because I don't believe the earth is flat? And it's like, no. You, no, you're not understanding. You're just trying to act out of emotion now. You're not using the discernment that God gave you. You're using man. You're using your ego and saying that uh, you're questioning my salvation if you say that I have to believe the earth is flat. But it's, yeah. it is a very simple thing that, okay, read this, be objective. And it says it's flat over and over and over. Well, yeah, there's there's a lot of stuff that... So here's another thing I think that's very, very interesting. So when Jesus comes back, it says, every eye will see, right? So it says, behold, he come, it's Revelation 1, 7, 8. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen, I am the Alpha Omega, the beginning and the end, ing, saith the Lord. Okay, so think about it, guys. Every eye will see. Now, some people say, well, you know, we got TV, we got satellite, we got this. It says every eye will see. So if Jesus is coming in and it's on a flat. It's coming through the clouds. Coming through the clouds, every eye will be able to see. But if he's on a globe, a fourth China of the won't earth. China will be able to see it until three hours fourth, later. Yeah, a fourth <laughs> of the earth. <laughs> but it's later. saying every <laughs> eye will see. So I think that's interesting to think about. Also, guys, think about this, okay? Stars fall from heaven that's what jesus says here's what you got to understand when jesus was on the earth okay he didn't sin so when he's speaking in mark okay 13 verses 24 through 25 he says but in those days after the tribulation the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall give shall not give her light, which I thought is interesting, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. This is Jesus speaking in Mark, okay? He said that the stars will fall. Supposedly, there's 200 billion stars in our galaxy. All of them are the size of the sun or bigger, our sun or bigger. They're 2.5 trillion. Okay, no, no, I'm sorry. They're 2.5 million light years away. One light year is 6 trillion miles away. One light year times it by 2.5 million. You see how far away that star is. So what well, they say is incredibly ridiculous. First they, of all. they say that the closest uh, star to yeah, us, I, I think I had it written down. It's the 15 billion light years away. And <laughs> there you go. It's they, 15, 15 billion. That's the closest. And they say that the Earth is only 14 billion years old. So according to their own calculations, we wouldn't be able to see the closest star for another billion years. <laughs> you know, so think of, and then think about this, guys. You see that? You see that time? One, you, that's this, their this, own wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. This guy one got light year, one <laughs> light year is is five, it's like 5.8 trillion years. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter. The math is too hard to figure so out. Times so it by tell fourteen. You so. These people are freaking. Well, if you so believe light these... years, just means <laughs> how how far until we can see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, they... So it would take. So what, it's measured in time. So if it's <clears throat> fifteen billion light years away, and we're only fourteen billion years <clears throat> old, oh, you know what? You know, then it would be closest... another billion years let's, until let's we okay, see it. Earth. It actually says the closest star to Earth is four point two light years away okay but the, i think you're getting the billions and billions because um dude four light okay four light years would be four times six that's 20 trillion miles away is how far the closest star is guys yeah and, they, and they, you can see it in a telescope and it's no problem like oh no biggie it's right there you know it's just it's only 20 trillion miles away what the come on well, guys really i, I like to I like and just jesus too, jesus but. says that the stars are gonna fall from heaven and then revelation it says 
Jesus in Revelation is talking here too. And Jesus is not going to lie. It says, And the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs when it is shaken by a wind. Then the sky receded as a scroll. What is that? That's the firmament opening up when it is rolled up and every mountain and island was moved out of place. Jesus is saying this, guys. We believe Jesus is God, right? Okay, if you're Christian and maybe you believe the Trinity, maybe you believe Unitarian. I don't know what people believe, but I mean, as far as I believe, I believe Jesus is God, right? So when he's speaking, he's not going to lie to us. He's going to tell us the truth. Jesus couldn't sin on the earth. So when he said the stars are going to fall from heaven, he wasn't lying. Now, if you listen to the book well, of Enoch, if you listen to the book of Enoch, if you if you read the book of Enoch, it says that the stars are celestial bodies. <gasps> oh, so in the book of Enoch, it almost says that they're like angels. They're watchers. Are the watchers that are flying around in a certain pattern at all times. So, hey, I don't they're want to get too to crazy. The earth. I don't want to get too crazy, but celestial beings, uh, the moon is a her, the, the sun is a he. Like, whoa, this, it, just, it just gets interesting, guys, okay? Very interesting. Um. So we talked about God when he flooded the earth. Okay, we talked about that. Uh, another thing I thought was really cool was that uh, Daniel, his vision, he says this. Uh, it's a vision, so I don't put too much weight on it. But he says the highest tree uh, is, is, uh, is, is, he was, they were able to see. Uh, it says, in Daniel, the king saw a tree of great height at the center of the earth, reaching with its top to the sky and visible to the earth's farthest bounds. Okay. Well, so that, that's the idiom for for uh for because that's Nebuchadnezzar that's that's Daniel four right? Yes, Daniel, Daniel yeah, four. It's, it's a that, vision. Yeah, Nebuchadnezzar, it's a vision. Nebuchadnezzar so, wrote that verse in the Bible. If there was a high tree, the highest tree, you could see the boundaries of the earth. That couldn't happen on a globe, okay, guys. But also, what about when Jesus was taken to the highest? mountain and de the devil said you could see all the empires right i thought that was interesting too uh so once again the devil it says uh matthew 4 8 uh once again the devil took him at very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world in their glory <gasps> you could see all the kingdoms from the highest mountain maybe there was no smog maybe there was no pollution maybe there was no freaking jets flying in the sky just making our freaking skies disgusting. Maybe it was just clear. I don't know what mountain it was, but it says he took Jesus to the highest mountain and they could see the kingdoms of the earth. Okay. So I thought that's pretty interesting, dude. Very interesting. Um, so what else do we have? Oh man, we got, um, God took Elijah and Enoch up to heaven. That's what the verses say. It says that Elijah went up by whirlwind into heaven. It doesn't say, so if you're on Australia, and it's a globe. Are you going down to heaven now instead of up to heaven? Because you're like, you're like this. Or if I'm in Israel is over here and then I'm in America, do I need to go up and over to heaven? Uh, I don't get it. No, man, it's up to heaven. That's what it says. Elijah and also Enoch. Um, hey, uh, thing and, and, and the pyramids in Egypt, they are so precisely lined up with the stars above if and these people were so primitive and stupid and and, and you know they didn't they, they didn't they, they weren't as we were how the the mathematics and, and precision you'd have to know to do that you, you you there's no way the earth could be it could not be moving that fast because there's no way that these stupid people could line that up like that and make it and build it perfectly to where it doesn't sink because it, it's supposed to pyramids corkscrew through the earth they don't they, when they're not made right they sink and they corkscrew through it's like a but this these don't so and why would they make it there why why would they put it exactly lined up with those stars how did they do that how did they do that science today can't even do that and Josh like, earlier like, said about the Georgia Guidestones there's a hole in the side of a Georgia Guidestones that you can you go, see bro. the north star Polaris yeah, yeah Polaris every single I think it's uh <laughs> Uh, yeah, spring equinox, or maybe this is true, man. That's wow. that's yeah, that it's you can very... see every year, and that's impossible. If there, if we are on a ball, <laughs> why do we see the same stars? I know, why don't we 554,000 miles that are an supposed hour to be under us <sighs> spinning? Okay, a bullet is 1800 miles an hour, guys. True. Okay, we're moving 66 times faster than a bullet. 
I don't think so. And our face was would be how like about this. <laughs> how about the International Space Station? That's seventeen thousand miles an hour. Five, Give me 17, a break. Five. And, it just, and it just showed up there. I don't see any video of it going oh, they, up there. They built it, it going up that there. fast in oh orbit. Oh my gosh, guys! Say. Are you balls enough? Okay, I I went to Kuwait, right? Like I'm I'm like I'm in line. There's like Iraq this way, Kuwait this way. Moving Think about fast. this. <laughs> I was in the army. Uh, Kuwait this way, Iraq this way. They're giving guns and all this stuff. I'm just like, oh man, this is intense. You know? Can you imagine being an astronaut? You're like, okay, guys, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna fly out to uh, this thing that's moving 17,000 miles an hour. You're gonna be going 300 miles an hour. You're probably you're gonna, not gonna come back. You're gonna latch on and you're gonna get in there. You're gonna eat your meal. You're gonna be just fine. We believe you. This is a NASA. We know what we're doing. No way, dude. That's and then also, what happens if, uh, let's say, when they went to the moon? And what if you went outside the Earth's gravity when you're going 66,000 miles an hour? But he's going to snap every bone in your body, bro. They're, they're crazy, dude. Hey, let I me know. tell you this. China is 11,491 kilometers from New York. Oh, how many miles is that? Let's see. Because, uh, let's see, how many miles? At 11,000 kilometers. It's like 8,000 or... Or does it go higher? Yeah, let me. It's no, seven thousand. So it's job, yeah, seven thousand one hundred and forty miles. So if you were going at the ISS speeds, which people can uh, allegedly see with their eyes, they would take ah. you like twenty minutes like to the, get. Can, can to you see a bullet to China? <laughs> can you see a bullet, guys? Can you see a bullet moving eighteen hundred miles an hour? How the hell are you seeing the damn International Space Station going seventeen thousand miles an hour, and yeah. it's the size of a bus? And you're gonna say you see it from here? I can you look and up? Oh, that's the International Space Station. Look at that thing; it's amazing. People no, said they man. saw Sputnik, which uh, in Russia that freaked them out. They thought it was a UFO when it's like the size of me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, come Back on, guys. Like <laughs> we can't believe these people. These people lie to us about high. everything, guys. Yeah. They lie to us about every they, uh, 9 11, okay, the uh, the Kennedy assassination, the Gulf of Tonkin. I can name all these things World War One, World War Two, all these things, false flag, false flag, this, 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 COVID, this, this. But then all of a sudden you say, dude, they lied to us about the shape of their. No. They wouldn't lie to us. Mm -hmm. No way. That's that's for sure not that. You're Why lying. would they teach it in school? Dude, <laughs> Think about this. The Bi if, if I'm talking about the Bible, right? And and I tell you, you know what? Evolution's not right. So that's biology. People would say, okay, if you're a Bible believer and you say evolution is not true, I can understand that. If I tell you that um, that anxiety, depression is of the devil, it's not psychological. It's of the devil. Okay, it's okay to question psychology. But when I question cosmology, oh my, you, you do not question that. NASA, not NASA. Nah, dude. Think about it, bro. Read the Bible. It is it goes against what NASA says, but it's crazy that you can question all these ideologies. But when you question cosmology, people want to punch you in the face, well, bro. You evolution I mean? is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Like, how did monkeys become human? Like, who? How could babies survive? Like, were they were they just born babies from monkeys? <laughs> what came first, the chicken or the egg? Uh, yeah, but where's that? Where's that? Gay, there would be no gays. For that, where's that? Evolution, right? Right. Evolution. They, they, they have the quote unquote missing link. Like they tell you that yeah, there's no evidence for it, but we're gonna go with that theory. It doesn't. It's make like you, gravity too. It's like if oh, you yeah. read the Bible oh. and you believe in that's, God, that's part of density. You word. 1666 you, and, and you start gravity. to and and you go off and you start learning these these other uh, secondary doctrines like you know, globe and all these, all this stuff and lies up. It kind of makes you question God. Yeah. Like, you okay. don't, you, you, because everyone around you just believes it. So they're like, Oh yeah, that, that Bible yeah, stuff it is leads not you down. It, it could lead you down. It, like, like you said, when people are falling away of the myself, church, I can ruin my salvation. So I'm not saved because I don't believe this. No, no, no. But it can cloud your view on it and actually yeah. start leading you towards a different, it's, yeah, down the road of not being saved anymore. It's a faith builder. Because what happens is, yeah, like Jason says, what happens is when you're reading these verses and I'm telling you these verses and then you, you are like on the fence and you, and you, and you watch, you listen to scientists, you get, you get in all these things that, that, that they've been telling you. And I start telling you what the Bible says. You're like, oh, well, that can't be true because NASA says this or Tyson, Neil Tyson Degrassi says this. My science teacher says this. So the Bible, that can't be true. So what they do, it takes away from your faith. Of God, the further away they could take you away from God and God's word, and and they want to keep you into this 
you know, this, this little bubble that they have everybody into this, this indoctrination. Once you get out of that bubble and you realize that, you know, that God is real and that everything's a spiritual battle at all times, then you start seeing it differently. Like, Oh, the reason yeah. why I'm, I'm sinning right now is because the devil knows he's doing the same old tricks to me again and again and again. Then you start finding out his tricks and you, and God starts showing you. And then all of a sudden you start breaking the matrix and you're like, Oh, and then you start reading stuff like this in the Bible right. and you're like, you're breaking the matrix. And when you, it's so freeing and it's, that's why I like to talk about it. I have a passion for this. I, mm -hmm. I have a passion. I love the, the Lord. The I Bible, love God. The sword that cuts through the lies. Of it Satan. is double edged sword of the and adversary. Satan, who is That's running I got, this? I got my sword and my Bible yes, right it's next a to a double each other. edged sword. Who's running this world as we know it, man? There's like a triangle a to on top of pyramid that triangle. Scheme. Pyramid is going to be the Lucifer and the Luciferian doctrine. Look at every secret society. What ends up when you get to the 33rd degree level? What is it? Lucifer's at the top. The devil. You find that out, okay? So what's happening? The devil has all the agendas. They got the World Monastery. We got the Committee of 300. Actually, below that is going to be the Council of 13. The Council of 33. We got the Committee of 300. All these agendas are being passed down. There's think tanks right there's these think tanks like uh uh there's like the trilateral commission there's like the cfr there's like um uh, what's that other one the, the tavistock okay yeah, oh, that's tavistock, the think yeah. tanks so they're all coming up with all these ideas to feed the public and that's us at the very bottom receiving this information and what yeah. it is all that stuff is doing is separating every single person from god as much as possible i feel like josh is like an old testament uh christian <laughs> or like old testament uh israelite <laughs> just spin off all that knowledge right there that's just, just think just about all that right guys. off the top all that it's just like a conveyor belt right it's, all this stuff is happening and at the very end you get this little drop of knowledge why all those people are they're feeding you all this stuff so what's happening to your mind all the time at all times is the phone and then there's this distraction there's this it's a globe it says god is far away he's not near us there's a, all this stuff happens and all of a sudden you just get further away from god and then you you stop believing you lose your faith mm -hmm. but um it's it's interesting so i want to go over this before we end okay guys this is very interesting there's something in the bible called the strong delusion and when god is talking or when paul's talking about this in thessalonians he's speaking of the antichrist before he says this and it says right here second thessalonians 2 11 and for this cause god shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie in some cases some people think it's project blue beam some people believe it's aliens i personally can connect this verse for me with the shape of the earth or the flat earth because science. the illusion, the, the strong delusion is the globe that science is telling us about. But as I read the Bible, all right, it says that even the elect will believe the lie. You see that the, you know, the, the people that are in office, all these people believe this thing, right? Everybody believes this thing. But when you read the word of God, it's like, oh, it doesn't match up with science. So I believe this could be that. I'm not saying 100% it is, but it could be. Because like I said, man, gravity is discovered in 1666. Uh, 90 degrees minus 23.4. Axis is 66.6. .6. We're going 66,600 miles around the sun. All right? Like I said, you divide 8 by 12, you get 666, guys. These guys are crazy. Look at and them. That's why, to they keep, that's why they keep changing the 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 versions of the Bible and making it to where they, they don't say firmament in there. Yes, there you go, like bro. And you're like, well, what are you talking? Them yeah. guys, people nowadays, are like, what are you talking about? Like, well, that's not in the Bible. It doesn't say that. Ask like, your pastor. You're reading a everybody that's Bible. Christian. Go. You can even take your phone and look up uh, churches around you and and call them and say, can I please speak to the head pastor? He'll get on the phone and you say, hi, sir, how you doing? I just really have a question about the Bible. I was reading Genesis and what is the firmament? And I swear, dude, there's actually stuff on YouTube where they call pastors and pastors go, uh, well, the, uh, the firmament, oh, I don't know, let me look it up. I don't, the firmament, what is that? They don't even know because I even asked my own pastor. I love you, Pastor Daniel. But he told me to ask, his, you know, somebody else, the apolog apologetic, okay, because they're going to be able to explain that. But I'm like, well, let's have a, let's sit down. So and go Bible from Genesis study. 1 to Genesis 119. And I will show you that when you're talking about it being a, uh, you know, it's a uh, expanse or it's a this, it's a that. Nah, dude, it's a firm. Whoever moment. wrote it, though, but whoever wrote that, who, who, how would they even know what that was? 
Yeah. How, how, yeah. how would they know what that is in that language, in that form, what that is? And what that explains that connects back to what you were just saying, Josh, that the, uh, that the strong delusion, like the, your pastor, he's obviously, he's read the Bible many times and he's <laughs> read over that and it's never popped off in his head to, Oh, wait a second. What's that? It's the strong delusion Brr, over that word. Yeah. It doesn't fill it doesn't fill up seats in the thing to have that because you're, you're going to have people like, looking at you like Bills you're up, crazy. Like, Oh yeah. When, when fills up you, a lot of conspiracy theorists. I'll tell you that. Yeah. When, I don't care. I'll you, tell you how it is. You know, yeah, like, yeah. If you don't like it. Sorry, bro. I'm not here to prove, I'm not here to get you to like me. I'm trying to help you get saved. And if you're going to believe lies, you keep believing lies, keep believing lies. And you're, you're, you're prone to, you know, prone to really, I, I say this, if you're going to put me down for reading the Bible and you're a Christian, let the persecution commence because that's what Jesus says. You will be persecuted when that's okay with me. Persecute me as much as you want because I'd, I'm not giving you my own opinion. I'm giving you some interpretation of how I feel, but I'm telling you up. I'm talking in. I'm saying firmament. I'm saying I'm just reading you the Bible. I'm telling, I do tell you, I do tell you the scientific view so that you can kind of compare what they're saying to what the Bible says, but I did not go and say my own opinion here. I'm not trying to be like, Oh guys, um, you know, there's, there's flat earthers out there that are, that are going, they're trying to create their, you know, this, this world or this thing that like they're trying to create it, like, because they're reaching for it because they, they haven't found God yet. Well, because they want to be right. They don't want it. They don't care about proving God. They want to be right about flat earth. They want to be right about that. They want to be yeah. right. It's like not about being right. Yeah. It's, it's about telling the truth. It's about spreading the truth. And, and, and the truth is part in the Bible. It's, it's in the scripture. It's all search the scriptures daily to find out that these things are so. And if this is, if, if, if God's lying to me about that, then God's a liar. Yeah, he's not. I'm telling you guys, think about it, dude. And you can think care about less it. about what, 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 how, what, what we, we're just a number him too, you know? No. Well, no, and not. Right. And any flat earthers that are out there listening to this, you know, read the Bible. Don't, uh, don't be hesitant about it. Like, this will help you understand. Like, that's when I got into conspiracy theories and I have the silly commercial about it that I put on some of my episodes was, uh, I got into conspiracy theories and then like, there's so much and you're like, what's going on? Like, do I really live in this world where I've been deceived and everyone before me has been deceived? And then you find the Bible and you start to research the conspiracy theories behind that, uh, like your podcast and others, Gary Wayne, you know, all the Dr. Michael Heiser, so many different people who really know L.A. Marzulli, they, yeah. they know the conspiracy angle and the Bible, and they're like, oh, yeah, this this has been foretold the whole time. This is what the Bible's for. Yeah. And when, you know, I came into conspiracy theories and all that, I didn't know Christianity, but I was of the mindset of, oh, that's all nonsense, you know, the Bible. It's, it's ridiculous because I had the mindset of the modern-day person of science is real, the Bible's ridiculous. And then once... I got broken of reality. Then the Bible set it in like I was spiraling out of like, I didn't know what was up. <laughs> yeah. And, and then the Bible what is up gave what's me down, yeah. balance. Yeah. And Jesus really centered me and he helped me understand everything. Everything gets put into perspective. All the conspiracy theories, spirituality, everything is in the Bible. And even though things have been taken away, added, changed, whatever, the basics that you need to understand everything that there is on earth right now is in the Bible. And the more you can read it to understand and not read it to debunk, not read it to fit your own narrative, but read it to understand what it is saying by the people who said it at the time that they said it, you will understand your place in life right now. And people, you got to understand, the Bible has historicity. The, there's people so that much. speak Hebrew, that speak Greek, and that speak English. If there was stuff mistranslated, we would know by now. Because people know Hebrew. And I mean, they are like, dude, you got to see the... I, I sit there and listen to these debates, dude, between, between this person and this person. They know Hebrew. They know Greek. They know English. They know Arabic. They know everything. So... If, if there's stuff taken out of it, I know there's one part that I know for sure. It's it's in 1 John. It says, God, the word, 
and the flesh are one. It was added in 1400 because it's a Trinity doctrine it was a plural. that no, but, but, was but, 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 added. El, 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 El. That, it's it's a plural. no 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 not that three though. Yeah, but that okay. I'm talking about First John. That's this is not Elohim in the beginning. God, this is different. This is something that was actually added. I know that part was added, but I'm telling you guys, there was the scrolls. what? So the third part of it when it says uh, the Word was with God. And... No, 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 no. That is, I'm talking about First John. I'm not talking okay. about John verse okay, one. I'm okay. talking about First John. That part right there that you're talking about, that was not added. That was there, bro. But there's yeah. first John. There's first John, there's second John, and there's third John, okay? Yeah. Or sorry, John 1, John 2, John 3. There's like a part where he says the word, or it says that God, the word, and the flesh are one. It says that, but that was added, that part. Because listen to Trinity uh, 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 debates, right? And And they never say that verse, even though that would put that verse right there. I was like, that's it. I found it. For my Trinity podcast, I'm like, I found it. It says it. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, ah, no, they added it in 1400. Ah, uh, no, I can't use it. So listen, guys, historicity, there's, there's, dude, people want to say all they want. Oh, they added this. They took it out. The Romans did this and this and that, blah, blah, blah. But bro, listen, guys, read it. You have discernment and God is in control. Satan, he, he's, he's controlling the world. Like, you know, all these powers and all that stuff. Yeah. I, I think the answer to Satan but God is ultimately in control. You think God's going to let you just take out of the Bible? It says that if you take from this page, you will get all the plagues and pestilence of the Bible. So you, if you read it and it says that, Jesus says that, you're going to be careful about adding and taking away. So it's you got to be careful. So Well, that's interesting too. Matter. And I talked about this on my live earlier, is that Paul, all of Paul's uh, writings came after that was written. The book of Revelation was written before Paul was alive. Uh -huh. And that, so, you know, half the New Testament would have to be taken away. But what that means is you can't add or take away from it. Paul was still preaching the word of Jesus Christ. He was expanding yeah. on little parts. Jesus is talking he about wasn't... revelation though, that he's talking about that book in particular. Don't okay. take away or add to this book because it's so important because it's a prophecy that that's going to happen. And it's like, whoa, but guys, if he says it in that book, we're going to take this seriously if you are if you're taking away and adding to the Bible because God's not going to allow that to happen. Book of Enoch, I don't know guys. Ethiopian, it's in the it's in their canon. Here, it's not. Now, the Catholic Church might have taken some books out and added some books, but I don't think the Catholic Church rewrote parts because they would if they rewrote it, they would have took out idolatry. Oh yeah, they, they, have, I don't they want have different God. verses they, in the they Bible, in said, Bible. Yeah, I know in go. their Bible. But I'm talking about, you know, so anyways, guys. Yeah, so but I'm just but Paul right Paul was still preaching the same word as Jesus, so he wasn't adding to it. <laughs> no, uh, he was thickening the Bible, but he was still preaching the same word. That's what he means when he says don't add to or take away from. It's uh anyone who's trying to preach new things that are trying to bring new things into this. And Paul isn't bringing new things. He's expanding on the things that Jesus was saying to help he the people the who Testament, he was speaking bro. to. He was a freaking, he was so smart, bro. He know the Old He's Testament. He's the most learned like the fact man. He was, he was so on it. But guys, we love you guys. I think we're about an yeah, hour uh, and 38 before, minutes like in. It, the reason why we I brought uh, was talking about the changing of the words in the Bible is because in when the devil takes Jesus up to that mountain and is talking to him, he, he misquotes the Bible. He says the he says it to a certain point right, but then he flips some of the words around and, and Jesus corrects him. And that's the thing, like, like that's how you know, like when you when you when someone starts messing with the actual sentence of it, like flipping it around or putting it a certain way, it takes away like from the like it takes away from the actual meaning. Like, like there's a uh the, the, the verse that says people think that it says Jesus will be coming. Uh, soon, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus never says that. He says, "I'll come quickly. I'll be coming," mm -hmm. which means like you won't even know what's going to happen. I'll be right at that. Uh, it'll be it'll be there. He doesn't say anything about being soon, and and that's what that, that, I, I I cannot stand that sometimes when people read uh, read read those verses. That's crazy. Like, yeah. That's a good. That's good. That's a good point yeah. because quickly and soon would be a Are synonym. totally different things. Yeah, it would be a synonym yeah. like in English, but then all of a sudden it's like, oh, that's that is different. Yeah, you're right. right. But like. Oh, but they're changing it to where the little the, a Bible now, like uh, what's changes. his name? Uh, what's that guy on uh, President G? No, uh, uh, he, he does the Harvest Crusade. Uh, uh Greg Laurie, yeah, Greg Laurie. Greg Laurie reads out of this out of, out of the Bible, this and, and when he reads it, 
and I'm going along with him sometimes and reading it with the with the King James version. I'm like, dude, if you're telling me this stuff like that, man, you're 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 making me think that like he has like, his own. He he wrote like a Bible that's easier to 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 read. Yes, for, but what for you're us. doing, yeah, is yeah, yeah, that and you're passing it on to our younger generation. Okay, and then and it, it gets watered down, watered yeah, down, yeah. watered down. And I just got, hey, Jesus loves now, you. Don't even worry about a thing. You're saved no matter what. Well, President Xi, yeah. he just changed the verse, and it's not even in the original testament or original writings, but the part of John where the woman is uh, being an adulterer, and uh, she he says, whatever, whoever's without sin, cast the first stone. Uh -huh. Well, in China, President Xi had them change it to Jesus throwing the stone, murdering the woman and saying, now I am a sinner like you and I could throw a stone because I was the only one without sin. Oh. So it oh, made yeah. Jesus not only is that story not in the original, <laughs> but it turned Jesus into a murderer. Oh, and my a sinner. gosh. Wow. So that's a big change. So, yeah, guys. Amazing, man. And, and you know what, guys? Uh, there's, there's a ton of, of, of verses about flat earth that are talking about the face of the earth. There's a ton of verses that talk about in the earth, like in Job, it talks about, uh, the devil talks to, to, to God and says, I've been to and fro on the earth and in the earth. Right. So there's stuff talking about hell being in the earth. And there's several verses talking about the firmament and talking about God's throne being above it. I didn't even get to go over all the verses I have. Mm -hmm. I went over most that I could go over in a condensed fashion because we had a lot of like our intro was, was, was kind of, it was like about a half an hour of, of us like having a good time. Yeah. So, but how would you act though, man? If you knew that hell was real and, 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 and God was real, how, 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 how quickly, would your yeah. monkey butt change and, and be like, okay, well, you know what? It, but but the devil makes you believe he's not real, but that's can, the greatest can, trick of the devil but you is to make you believe that he doesn't exist. It, yeah. You yeah. yeah. And, and, and to make you believe that if you are, let's say you are like a believer and you're like, everybody's saved. Like, like that's another thing that's like, you know, I, I was no, on a podcast. Bro. Not a wide road, dude. It's not I, a wide I was road, on a dude. podcast where, where this guy told me that that's what he believes. It's the new age thinking that everybody's saved. You, eh, it doesn't matter what, every, even child molesters, everybody's saved. And I'm just like, I, I don't want to be like, uh, I don't want to be uh, aggressive towards somebody or, or talk down to somebody or judge right somebody, but I'm just, you know, I have to break it down. Everyone like, has the chance to be saved, but they yes. have to repent. They have to work. You have, you have to, to repent. You have to, uh, you know, there's, there's things you got to do. So anyways, guys, thank you, dude. Thank you so much, bro. I hope that this oh is, God, this. You. I hope that this, uh, anybody that's listening, please don't, no condemnation before investigation, investigate. Yeah. Everything I talked about, investigate. Anything your pastor talks about, investigate. Anything that you read in the Bible, read it again. If you read it in the NIV, read it in the King James. If you read it in the ESV, read it in the NIV and then the King James. Just you got to ask God for discernment. I asked God for discernment and he sent me the, the most amazing stuff about. Now, I don't want you guys to go and worship the creation. What happens is people go and they start worshiping flat earth and worshiping the creation. And they talk about, oh, uh, that's all they speak about. I, I love to speak about this because it's like a, something, it's like a conspiracy mixed with the Bible. I love it. But it's a real I worship, people into the Bible. I worship the creator. I worship God. Yeah. I worship Jesus. I, I, that's the part I worship. I don't worship the flat earth or all the shape of the earth or, or any of that. But the stuff that we're talking about is part of faith building. I want you guys to start getting into God. Read the basic instructions before leaving earth. Okay. Read the Bible. There's so much stuff you can learn. You get close. You get, you get a relationship with the Lord. If you feel like going to church, I, I go to church. I like it. I enjoy it. Some people, they, they, they rather just read the Bible by themselves. Three or more gathered as church, whatever you want to do. But I'm telling you right now, dude, the Bible is the most beautiful, intricate, awesome god is the greatest thing in your that you will ever experience i believe me drugs women all of it i've had it fame i wasn't really famous but i mean i got a little bit of it all that stuff doesn't matter all that stuff is just a waste of life read ecclesiastes you can have a thousand women count concubines like uh solomon had the yeah. most precious and beautiful thing is worshiping the creator and having a relationship with god thank you guys for listening i really appreciate you and emmanuel 
I love you, brother. Thank you, bro. Yeah, I love you guys too. Thanks for coming on. And Thank I you. just want to say one last thing that you said the face of the earth. When we look at the face of the earth is the surface. And if you break down the word surface, it's surface. Wow. Right? There you it's, go. It's the yes. outward presentation of it. Yeah, like his story. His story. So, it's, it's, right. it's his story. It's if not I turn a, my face like this, is Satan. <laughs> you can see my uh, face, right? So I got like a flat face with the nose, and those are hills and valleys, right? And then down here would be shield. That's what it would be. It would be hell. So the yeah. face of the earth, and God talks about it, okay? God talks about the face of the earth, people falling flat on their face, you know? Mm. So it's interesting. Yeah. All right. Well, I had a great time. Uh, do you guys have any uh, – Jason, do you have any closing thoughts? Uh, yeah. Uh I just want to say to the, to the listeners out there, you know, like we said, don't, don't take our word for it and don't, and, and don't just think that, you know, we're trying to push this and, and that's our only, that's our only thing. We just want you to, you know, uh, to, to listen and, and we're trying to force feed you information. No, we're trying to, uh, we want you to be a self feeder, you know, read the word, self feed yourself, get, get into it. And, and like it says, it says, you know, read the, read the scriptures daily to prove these things are so. Make sure you're doing that. Make sure that you're you have you do have a relationship with with God and 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 a personal relationship because that's really important as well. And uh, and and the thing is, is that flat Earth, you know, uh, evolution, whatever that is, whatever it is, it, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not bad to believe in that stuff, okay? Because it's it's. It's it's not okay. It's 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 not it's not good to be arguing about it. It's not it's not like we're trying to argue it either. It's just that the truth is way better than the lie, because after a while, you don't know what to believe anymore, and that's what's going on these days. People don't know what what is up and what is down, and they always question. Well, why would they do that? Why would they do this? Why would the government tell you this? Well, why why would why is that so important to you? Because the, the 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 being right's not important it's the lie that's important why are you telling me this my whole life and now that when when i actually do go on my own and read the bible and start getting into it and diving in because it is it is difficult it is hard to do it it's hard to, it's hard it's really hard to 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 do this it's very hard but nothing easy is ever good and and that's why god wants you to learn languages he wants you to check it out he wants you to understand for your own your own understanding, not what somebody else has been, you know, telling you and you just regurgitate it because, and, and I'm kind of guilty of that sometimes, but when I get down to the nitty gritty, the, the word is the truth. And, and it's, it's crazy when you start to see that and get it, put it all together. Like, like Todd said, once, <clears throat> once you get balanced with it, you're, you're like, you're like, you're like, you're like the, the matrix just pfft, dodging the, the bullets of everything because you know, it's coming, you know, it's like, oh, that's a lie. You're dodging, that's the, a devil's, lie. You're dodging yes. the devil's arrows, man. You, you know, just, that television is not good for you. You know that the phone is not good for you. You know, everything. that pornography is not good for you. You know, that never, is not good for you. You know that, but the devil knows that as well. And he knows that very well. And he knows it feels so good to go into it. Yes. And yeah. this is, that, that's, it's that's hard the, to that's deny yourself. So. He has been on this earth for a very long time, and he is the owner of this earth. Because if he wasn't the owner, he would never be able to offer it to Jesus Christ as a way out of going to the cross. The easy yeah. way out. Just, yeah. just serve me, bro, and bow to me, and I'll give you all this stuff. Okay? Mm -hmm. And that is a temptation, which is real because the ownership of that is real. Because, he hey, if I can tell you, hey, I'll give you this bridge. You know I don't own this bridge. You know I don't own <laughs> this stuff. But... He did own it, and that's it how says, the temptation is real. It actually says that he fell from heaven <gasps> like lightning. Where did he fall from? From above the firmament onto the earth, okay? Fell from heaven, right? That's interesting. Also, in Daniel, when he did the prayer, it says that uh, that the, the it took him three weeks fighting a spiritual battle just to get to, to, to Daniel. Yeah, the prince of Persia, right? But Persia wasn't in, so in Daniel's time. Persia was not even there. And when you oh, say yeah. like lightning, it's going through the portal from heaven to the earth, and then boom, yeah. he's just there. It's like he a fell from heaven, so it's like, just like lightning. So he was able to fall from the firmament to heaven because Jesus why? Said that. Earth and heaven yeah. are connected. Oh my gosh, guys, this is insane. Yeah. There's so much stuff, guys, and I love yeah, you guys. So much. Please, all right. Well, where can they find you guys? You can find us. On Josh Monday Christian and Conspiracy Podcast on Spotify, 
on anywhere that 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 uh, podcasts are distributed, or you could find us at Josh Monday Music and Podcast on YouTube. Uh, you could find me on IG, Instagram at Josh Monday Music and Podcast. That's all I use is IG because, dude, I don't have time to check all this other yeah. stuff. And but man, I got so much stuff. I got three kids. We research like when we do our shows, we research like. 20 hours, 30 hours, we do Bible, and we also have to do conspiracy. So it's a lot of research, so I don't have time. So if you want me to pray for you, hit me up on Instagram. If you need, if you have any questions about what I just spoke about, hit me up on Instagram. DM me. I answer everybody. I answer everybody. Everybody and, I'll answer. And like I said, be a self-feeder. You know, learn learn the Bible, and 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 you you you'll you'll be very rewarded for it. You'll be happy, and it's awesome because you get people will be like, oh. Well, I heard this, this, and this, and you, and they think you're not that smart, and they think you know nothing. You flip them on, and they're like, "Well, this guy, cat does actually know his stuff because he." he and you can word it with scripture because that's going to be your that's going to be your weapon. Truth, the, yeah, it is a double edged sword. It, it when you when you put on the armor more. of God, the word of God is the sword. Prayer is your weapon. Okay, you got the the breastplate of righteousness. You got the self the helmet of salvation. You know the sword is going to be, oh, you got the belt of truth. But the sword is your offense. It's the word mm-hmm. of God, a double-edged sword. Slice through okay? them lies. Slice through in the spiritual battle that's going on. You're using the word of God to fight it. So when yeah. you're being tempted and you say, you know, like like Jesus was, like he's, he's fighting the devil with the word of God. That's how it works, baby. That's it. That's all you got to do, man. Thank you guys. For oh, yeah. One, one more thing. Oh, yeah. One more thing, too. Oh, yeah. You are eternal. Your soul is yeah. eternal, no matter what you think, because you believe in microchips and 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 information on on on. Right, that's the immortal. Right? We're not immortal. You don't want to be that. You want to be eternal. Yeah, yeah, you are eternal. You are eternal. You are no matter what you think. You you. I don't care what you believe, Buddha. What it is, your soul is eternal. It will go somewhere when you pass, because this is your little tent you have for a while. This is what people understand. You, this is, this is not forever. It, it's going to yeah. rot away. It's going to go away. And, but your soul will be eternal. Whether right. you spend it in hell or you spend it in heaven, or you spend it trapped in some, in, 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 in some, you know, where, wherever you, the people get sent, where they, they, they don't believe whatever, whatever it is, it, 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 it you will, you will. Absent think. from the body. Yeah, you will face the Lord. The man. That's what it you says. Will, if you're man, saved, you will face him no matter what. So right. judged. D- yeah. Whatever you think you're doing behind closed doors or whatever you think you're doing in front of everybody, it is seen no matter what. And right. the devil's homies see it and God's homies see it. They all see it and they use it against you. And and it's not, it's, and you think it's the worst thing you've ever done. It's not. Okay. They're saying it, 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 you're not far. You're, you're not you're not ever far enough away from yourself, from God to where you cannot be saved. If if you can, if you repent and you, and you you learn your lessons, you will, you could be, you you could be, enjoy your rest of your life and be happy. Blasphemy of the Holy spirit and taking the mark of the beast are the two things that you do not want to do, but everything else guys. I mean, as long as you, you, it's your heart though. It's not your mind saying, uh, Jesus, I love you. And I'm, and I'm good. Like a robot. It's your heart. Right, it's how you it. carry yourself. You have to, it's your heart. You're judged by your heart. Your actions speak louder than words. Woo. So, anyways, man, all this right. is all beautiful yeah, stuff, man. Yeah. Not one. beautiful stuff. Thank you so much for having us. Bro. Yes, thank you for coming on. And everybody, stay tuned for the outro. We'll see you there. Bye for now. All right, welcome to the outro. Thank you all for sticking around and hearing me talk, even though I'm by myself. I love the banter with Mimi, but I can still chat just a little bit. I don't have too much more tonight, so I'm not going to keep you here too long. But I do want to ask if you are here and you haven't done so already, please go like, comment, share, subscribe, rate, and review, whatever you can do to help support the show it's greatly appreciated become a patreon member at patreon.com backslash goodness over darkness make sure you go check out josh and jason monday's stuff their instagrams their podcast their youtube channel go like share and subscribe over there they have a great podcast so go over there 
if you want to get your food forest abundance, if you want to become an affiliate of food forest abundance, you can also do that as well. I have a link down there. There's two different links. If you want to become an affiliate, it's the second link. If you want to go get your own blueprint, if you want to get an installation done, that's the first link. So use the special code Godcast if you're going to be getting one. And now we'll get into the analysis a bit. Well, firstly, you know, you, the glasses, you see the glasses, they're blue blockers. They're amazing. I mean, I've used them. I've only had them a few hours now, but they're, it's incredible. I feel way better. My eyes aren't tired the way that they normally get after staring at the screen. Uh, the lights aren't as blinding because you, you can see I have, you know, uh, different lights that are, uh, on my screen here, you know, reflecting off of my glasses here, my lenses, and I have the ring lights so that I have proper lighting and uh, it's not blinding me. So it's kind of like sunglasses, but it's not for the sun. It's for the blue, the blue light. It's amazing. I can't even see my camera has little blue lights on either side to let you know that it's rolling. I can't see anything because it's just off, but it just looks like I'm looking at everything regular over there, but the blue isn't on. So it doesn't, it only takes away the blue light. It's amazing. It just makes everything just a little more orangey because it takes away that blue light. So it's, I guess, more natural or it's better for our eyes. So I suggest you guys go get them. Uh, I got the sleep doctor. It was 40 bucks on Amazon, came in one day. I think they sell two pairs for 60 bucks. They're pretty stylish. I mean, they look good. I also, I cut my hair. I cut my hair. I did that because there were so many things that God was leading me to cut my hair. I often, I ask God for guidance and I'll ask him specific things like, should I do this? And if you want me to do this, please make it abundantly clear well he does that and he did it this time and it's been uh, about a month now maybe a little bit more than a month actually that i've been feeling the urge to do so there's different things that occurred different things that are in the news cycle you know with the will smith slapping chris rock that was about a hair joke uh chris rock's uh tour his comedy tour that is following that uh, is called ego death and in the logo there's someone a woman most likely has her fingers on his hair and she's like tugging it out and it's the ego death and the hair it, it was not like your hair gives you an identity so to speak it, it, you know you are what people make of you, I guess. And that I was like holding on to the last piece of me that was still up north, that the piece of Todd Armstrong that, you know, cause that hair was, tw I was 29 the last time I got my hair cut, the day before my 30th birthday. I hadn't cut it since then. And it was cause COVID restrictions held everything back. And then I liked it. And then, it just got to be so much, and uh, and it was so ritualistic, not ritualistic, ceremonial, the way that it all worked out, the, the music, the synchronicities that the music happened when I went to go cut it, just what was playing, it, and it was just, it's so synchronistic. My whole life is synchronistic. I, I couldn't begin to tell you guys all the synchronicities that happened with me. I couldn't tell you a quarter of them because you wouldn't believe it. It's just, it's so much always. So I cut my hair because that's what I was led to. And I don't think it's that big of a deal, but Maya, my daughter and Mimi are, they were making a big deal of it because I didn't tell anybody that I've been thinking about. It. I just, I just did it. And then Mimi came home from work and she saw it and, you know, it was a bit of a shock, I guess. But I wear a hat all the time anyway, so I don't know 
it's not going to be that big of a deal. Not to me. I guess with my hat off, it looks different. But, I mean, it is what it is. It was just time to to change. Oh, and there's also a lot of synchronicities happening right now. Uh, today, as of this recording. So we started at midnight, at 12 midnight, right? And today is my 1200th straight day of doing my language, which I'm on Greek now, 1200 straight days, right? So I have this at 12 midnight, and then I have another interview at 12 noon, right? And my full 12 month anniversary, which was one year, is on the day this comes out. So you know, this is our one year anniversary show. Our my twelve month anniversary on the twelfth. And it's actually so it'll be twelve oh two for my language on that day, twelve hundred and two straight days. So a lot of twelves, a lot of twos going on, right? A lot of interesting stuff. And when I was realizing all of these things, how they were set in motion, it was actually on Friday. And there were so many other different things that happened. Oh, and also, this is my 120th episode. A 120th of Godcast. It'll be my 152nd overall. But two of them are appearances I had on other shows. So it would be my 150th original airing on my podcast. So there's a lot of different things lining up. And like I was just saying, when all this was coming to me, it like it was right after I read my Bible in the morning, because I read my Bible every morning. And then I'd go into a little meditation and it all started coming to me and what i realized was like what the thought i had was we are entering the 12th hour like that's what jesus was telling me like the 12th hour is upon us like all these 12s uh it's not a coincidence i'm not a guy that follows numbers like that either you can get lost in numbers but when something is speaking to you that much you know, the 12th is my 12 month anniversary, my 120th episode, my 1200th straight day of language at 12 midnight, 12 noon on the 1200th day of my language. I mean, you can't ignore all those 12s that are there. You drop all the zeros, you got 12s, so many of them. So, I mean, there were other things too, like, that day that I figured it all out, it was Alex Stein posted on Twitter. It was his 12th year anniversary of being on Twitter. And also Mimi sent me something that it was her. Uh, it was a post from the 12th annual oyster roast that uh, she sent out last year. And it was like a memory that popped up on that same day that she sent that to me. And also I learned that it's the 12 year anniversary of the affordable care act, which was why Obama was at the white house. I didn't even know that. And I haven't looked it up, but they were arguing the podcast. I heard it on, they weren't arguing, but one guy said it was 11 years and the other person correct them and said, no, it's his 12th year. So even if it was only the 11th, I heard them talking about it being the 12th, you know, 11th or 12th. So there's all these 12s and there were even more than that. And there's so many different synchronicities. I couldn't possibly tell you guys everything. I just couldn't. We'd be here all day. I haven't even talked about the show that we just did. And it's already been 10 minutes or so. So, you know, it's just wild stuff that goes on in my life. And when God speaks to me, he speaks to me. He really does. So like I was just saying with all these 12s, yeah, that's what happened with my hair. There's just so many things lined up i prayed for it and god answered and i listen to god i see god everywhere in everything so i pay attention 
and I ask myself, is this God speaking to me? Uh, you know, I don't just absentmindedly go about my life. I reflect constantly. I remember what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, what I'm saying. I repent for them. And I am also remembering when I'm praying, what I'm praying for, so that when it happens, I recognize it for what it is. And it's God answering my prayer. It's not just another thing. It's a specific thing that happens specifically for me because I'm specifically praying for it. That's what it comes down to. So this was a fun, really fun episode. There was so much. And Josh, like he said, he had more stuff to go on, but I kept cutting him off because, uh, you know, Josh, he can go on about this the stuff but i like to jump in and comment and also jason you know uh w i like to have a flowing conversation about all the different things so i mean we could have gone on for hours the three of us will just go on and i love when i get comments from everybody please send me your comments your dms uh wherever and let me know what you guys think of the show and everything i had someone hit me up not too long ago saying he loved the direction of that I'm taking the show in, and uh, he was appreciative of my last appearance on Josh and Jason Monday's podcast. Jason wasn't on it, unfortunately, but Josh and I, when we covered psychedelics and uh, is it biblical, I mean, that was a great appearance. I loved that episode, but he texted me and said, hey, I love the direction of the show. I love you being on there, and, you know, sometimes I forget that... Uh, I talk to these guys all the time off air, you know, we're in communication a lot. So, uh, the audience may not know that like, I'm very close to these gentlemen or, and not just them, but others, uh, many other podcasters that I'm in constant communication with, but I love hearing from people no matter, uh, what it is really. I love to hear your thoughts about what's going on with me in the show and, and how I'm doing, and uh, just whatever it is, I really like to hear from you guys. So if you're still here now, you know, drop a comment, say what's up, let let us know what you thought of the show. Please uh, do whatever it is that you feel compelled to do. So that would be great. I don't think that I have anything else. It's been a uh, quite a day here so i think that we'll end it here but i think we're gonna close out in prayer oh before that make sure if you're still here and you haven't sent me an email for the bible study why not why haven't you sent me that email yet so send me the email it's free to join subject bible study i will put a star next to it and i will send out the link the next Sunday to you because that's how it's easiest. So please contact me and be part of the Bible study. And with that, we will close with a prayer. So dear God, we want to thank you for bringing us together with, uh, with close friends and brothers and to celebrate you. We want to thank you for providing us with the discernment and the understandings of what is going on in this world through your word that is written in the Bible. We want to thank you for the Bible to be able to provide us with basic instructions before leaving earth. And we want to thank you for allowing us to celebrate all of your creation and point to its glory and the magnitude of which you go to explain in detail or have your human vessels explain for you in vigorous detail what the shape of the earth is and what is going on with the earth and heaven. We want to thank you for providing us with all of the information that we need to understand things so that no other man can then convince us otherwise with mathematics or uh, 
calculations that we cannot determine ourselves but are just a figment of the imagination of the mathematical calculations. We want to thank you for providing us with all that we have, all that we have earned, all that we are supplied with, all that we are given freely. We want to thank you for all of it. And we want to continue to do your will. We want to continue to be guiding lights to bring people to you. It is the greatest honor, excuse me, it is the greatest honor to be able to spread your word to the world and to talk and have two or three or more gathered so that we may praise you and turn people to you. So we want to ask, please uh, provide us with the guidance and protection and the healing and the love that we all need. And whoever is hearing this and whenever they're hearing it, please assist them in bringing them closer to you and freeing them from their sinful ways and just have them become one with you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right, everybody, that's going to do it. So make sure you check out our guest, and we will see you next time. Bye.